Huddle up tight. Because it's the Friday Night Delight. It's Jimmy Nuts back with another episode of Chatting with Nuts. You should have a radio show, dude. I know I should. (laughs) Tad Williams told me that. My good friend Tad Williams actually told me that. Um, But I am joined tonight by the usual suspect and my semi-permanent co-host, and that is Alan from the Library of Alexandria, wearing his Sunday best here on the Friday night. I love it. Yeah, so y'all basically, it's basically anytime I'm like, hey, Jimmy, put me on that show. Um, that's how it is. Like, it's just, I just messaged Jimmy and I'm like, Hey, chatting with us next week. And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I said, I'll pencil you in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, so it, it comes around because I have to like, I have to watch like two, I can watch like maximum two of them and not have every one of my comments <laughs> heard before I can't stand anymore. So I have to get on so that I can be heard. That's my main problem with like watching people's live streams. I'm just like, I no one can hear me. The things <laughs> I say are important or insightful or just delightful. It is kind of the reason why we have YouTube channels because we're insufferable and we can't help but to voice our opinions. Um, though it's a little bit harder on lives because you can get things wrong. It's a little better whenever you can edit your mistakes out. Uh, I mean, that's sure. But if I mean, sure. But like, I'm not the kind of person if I if I'm wrong, that I'll be that I'll dig my heels in and be like, okay, my bad. This <laughs> the actual answer. <laughs> Sorry. I, I You have to do that in class a lot or else freaking kids, you know, they'll be like, well, you don't know anything. I'll be like, no. Sorry. I was wrong about that. Oh, cite your source. Oh, you don't have one. Then I'm going to stick with my answer to you. Show me. And then yeah. you know, a lot of times I have to look it up and be like. And then they're like, oh. It's like, exactly. Sit down. Um, How are you tonight, Jimmy? I'm good. I'm good. And I was going to say, uh, you, your kids have been frustrating you a little bit lately. Um, oh, Alex has a question, though. He says, hey, guys, did you finish The Spider by Leo Carew? Alex, I'm going to be honest. I read the prologue, and it had like one of my biggest pet peeves, which is like someone being like, "Of course, you mean we're going to team with our biggest enemy? Are you sure? And it's like, you just took the time to tell me that that was the enemy just to remind me. Like, you could have just reminded me. I hate that. It drives me crazy. Um, so, Alex, I will uh, I will cannibalize your answer about the cuckoo. Does not having started it count as finishing it? <laughs> because if it does, then yes, I am finished. I, I am a fighter. Yeah, I, I have not started it. It was like really high on the TBR and it has slid down tremendously. Uh, unfortunately, I will finish uh, the spider at least this year. Who knows if I'll continue after that. Uh, Leanna sent me the book, which to be honest is blackmail. Like it's blackmail. It, it, she's holding me hostage. Like, do I send it back? I mean, no, do no. send her a video of you burning it. That's aggressive. <laughs> no, that makes me sad. Cause like, I want to, I want to read something with Alex. Like I almost want to read it just, just cause of Alex. Um, and Alex now, yeah. gives me hope because he he just says it's good. And I'm like, that's probably exactly what it is. It's probably just good, yeah. which is fine. I, I still plan on getting to it, but I'm not. Um, I mean, I, I I have two buddy reads I have to finish first, like two actual read along things that I have to read before I can do that. And I just I just actually got sent a copy of Phillips book today, actually, like earlier, earlier this eve. Physical copy or what? No, no, he doesn't have those. And this is not like even the final proof copy or whatever but it it is it is his fu- like he finally got it into vellum or whatever and oh, with God. the map and 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 the cover question mark i don't know anyway he sent it to me so i could start looking at it to um yeah to prepare to, 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 yeah to start to start work on it or whatever yeah um talking with um kevin kemp he told me to there's like a like a work tracker thing like he said whenever you're doing an audiobook you should uh click this thing like if you're reading it because reading counts as research reading um rereading like doing anything anything for the recording you should turn that is it uh, called pivot or something like that i maybe i have it written down it's in my notebook somewhere um but yeah when i did freelance web development i did the same thing yeah yeah so um so yeah i'm gonna do that um i'm almost finished with the book i'm reading and then um uh, I think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna read Philip's book all all in one go. I think I'm gonna like read it alongside something else. Um, so that means it's not binge worthy, folks. Breaking I news: I not binge worthy. I literally the only thing the only thing I have read is the acknowledgement page where he talks about me uh, audioing it. 
hopefully better than that, audioing it and you making the web page. And then, you know, and then there's all sorts of like effusive love for AP. Oh my um, gosh. That's that's at the bottom. It's at the, bottom, the whole the whole bottom paragraph talks about how much he wishes AP had been born his brother and <laughs> that they lived in a house and had adopted three little girls for sitcom purposes. Um, is is there has there ever been a read where someone DNF'd on the acknowledgments page? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, this one, this the way of a Dan. I'm just kidding. I hope it's good. Um, yeah, I hope it doesn't suck. I mean, it would be really unfortunate if it did suck. Uh, yeah, I really unfortunate. <laughs> the thumbnail would be fun. Um, like I planned on kind of maybe doing like a poop emoji over Philip's face and just putting, is it dog shit? Like <laughs> <laughs> this will be the first one in my series. Is this book worse than being hit by a car? The answer is yes. <laughs> I would rather be T-boned by a drunk driver fleeing the cops after running over his wife again than read the second book in this series. I think it would be great if like the intro of the video was just you answering the question by walking into an intersection and, just, <laughs> and, like... and being hit and having the being hit by car filmed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and the good thing is, is that Philip can't join us tonight because he has company over his house that he's having dinner with. So we can say whatever <laughs> we want about Philip. <laughs> yeah, he, he said, guys, I just want you to know it's not because I hit 20,000 subs, which I did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what he did. Not only hit twenty thousand subs, he's about to publish. He's about to publish a trilogy. <clears throat> he's an author like, now. He's, Does that he's mean way, he's on author tube? I mean, he's way too big for us. The whole like blurbs page is like, um, authors. Like it's like Janny Wirtz, Mark Lawrence, John Gwynn, rubbing elbows. I mean, he's 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 definitely a big wig like we can't we can't associate with him anymore greasing palms rubbing elbows look at joanna joanna is so firmly planted in like the philip camp that she's calling us out knowing how much philip flexes on us for having 20k yeah philip is anything but humble it's I, I know. It's the opposite of humble <laughs> also um by the way by the way joanna i've also read song of ice and fire multiple times but but jimmy <laughs> but I couldn't possibly have anything to say on the characters from Game of Thrones. So, I mean, I could feed you lines if you need. I've read Game of Thrones like four times. Oh, no. Our bars are loading. Is is the video out for anyone else? No, mine isn't. Okay, it might just be my computer then. Yeah. Um, I have like a low connection warning, unfortunately. Sometimes this happens uh, whenever I have my laptop open too. So I apologize oh. if anyone's dealing with uh, technical difficulties. I'm actually going to try to reload this real quick. If you if you didn't catch if you didn't catch my dig, I need feel I need to explain it. Uh, Philip is on a discussion with Joanna about characters in Game of Thrones. I don't think I've heard I don't think I've heard Philip talk about Song of Ice and Fire once. So, yeah, the I got to I got to give Philip some credit for this is the fact that Philip <laughs> came to my rescue at ICFA when everyone was dunking on George R. R. Martin oh, and Song of Ice and Fire. Any chance they got like it was like the number one discussed thing, but it was always like, you know, people don't like him. People hate George for whatever reason. And uh, <laughs> Phil was he's like, your boy George took a beating in there. huh? And I go, yeah, he did. He goes, well, I like him, Jimmy. And I said, thank God. Thank God, Phil, we have you. Because if not, where would I be? So I got to give him some props for uh, sticking oh, hard in the camp. Sorry, Jimmy. I'm not qualified enough to talk about Game of Thrones characters. Please highlight Joanna's comment for me. Please click that and put that. So. Sorry, Joanna. Once I have it, once I have my doctorate and can teach college. Uh, then maybe I will be qualified to talk about Game of Thrones and the characters within. <laughs> you know well, what you meant, Joanna. Well, I uh, I run a little uh, Song of Ice and Fire podcast called Bend the Knee. There's the uh, bingo card for everybody. Uh, but I get comments all the time. Uh, we get an iTunes review like last week, and this guy was like, this new guy is an idiot. He thinks he's the first person to think that Bran can do such and such. And I'm like, I never said that. Like, you're not listening to me. You just wanted to gatekeep me. Just and tell that like, guy he's an idiot. I can't respond to iTunes comments. Or oh. I will. 
dang it so or the pro- the problem is is like like the freaking mouth breathers that only read like one series of books like over and over and over again like they have to like they have to like huff it like paint <laughs> Because that's the only way they find meaning in life is to read literally only one series so that they can be like, actually, to people who like have actual opinions about stuff, but don't know that on the 18th page of the original version of Game of Thrones, there is a inversion of vowels on the 12th word down the page. (laughs) Who cares? Who cares? Alan, I, I have to, I, I got to admit this thing. I actually have a couple of missions for you tonight, but this would be the first I, You one. read more than Game of Thrones, Jimmy. But before I did, I was that guy. <laughs> okay, okay, well, you have evolved out of the primordial suit. I have suit. evolved, yes. I Your have knuckles evolved. no longer drag on the ground, Jimmy. Uh, there, there, there's no more scabs, no scars. <laughs> exactly, the calluses are gone from your knuckles. I can barely remember my lifetime of uh being a gatekeeper uh but this is something that's like kind of important because we all have our favorite series right and are people bad mouthing my hawaiian shirt they better not be that's your sunday's best <laughs> so guys i don't actually wear this like around i bought this because at our <laughs> state latin convention last year the awards day was like it was like florida attire day like florida beach wear type thing and this is what people wear people who have too much money and hang around like the expensive part of town wear. And so that's why I bought it. And I have not worn it since then. Well, I think it looks last fabulous. Year. Oh, I thanks. think you look absolutely spiffy. My I friend. can't believe they're making fun of my Hawaiian shirt. I wore it because I also wore my, my one piece shirt that goes with it. Wait, anyway, do I got you have your one piece shirt on. Is your what? one piece. Do you have your one piece shirt on? Yeah. Nice. There's Luffy. Is that right? Is yeah. That, Luffy and Doro. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. Talk about um, your Game of Thrones. Being being a uh, a proverbial fart sniffer, if you will. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I used that with my students this past week. But like, sniffing farts? They were not. They were. They, they can eat lunch in my room. I let them eat lunch in my room. But the on on we have long we have a long lunch once a week, and a bunch of kids who or several kids who don't normally eat lunch in my room, eat lunch in my room. And the problem is, is they, they can always eat in my room. They know, but they, (laughs) it's, there's nothing wrong with reading the same series over and over again. The the equivalent of this, Alex would be if someone uh, said, tried to say something about me and Jim, me and Jimmy's chatting with nuts episodes, and then they corrected them. (laughs) <laughs> and like, did you know wait the are there those people do those people exist i, I don't think so but i there hope are. so that's that's the equivalent so um oh did my thing go off i didn't even hear it anyway um they i hate my room smelling like a taf- cafeteria i hate it i don't like pungent food aromas and so like three kids on friday were were like they had food that was in thermoses and the, today's the Friday food's kept in a thermos. It's spe- it smells. What? Today's it's Friday. Friday. What did I say? You said on Friday. Sorry. Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Um, and I yelled at them. I yelled at them and they, they got really mad because I told, told their food disgusting. I'm like, I'm like, you know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to bring y'all a jar of jarred farts and I'm going to hold it in front of your nose and you can sniff it since y'all don't care what stuff smells like. <laughs> So there, it was a long story to get to that, but it was, it was an excellent journey, honestly. And I, I can't believe it ended with you encouraging people. <laughs> I, I told them I'm going to bring a jar filled with farts and hold it under their nose. <laughs> Derek has a great observation. Uh, notice from Alan's last video that when Joanna Phillip and Jake recommend a book, it's an instant must read TBR. When Jimmy recommends any book, crickets and i would agree with this i mean i feel like every time i recommend you something you like it the last time you recommended me something was stoner which i read that's not the last time i've been telling you read lies of lock lamora recommendation you've given me lies of lock lamora no (laughs) what do you mean no i'm okay well here's well here's why you know what joanna recommends me no that's not true joanna recommended me that her thing is 700 pages too never mind i was gonna say yeah yeah don't listen if anyone knows you i'm i told you i was gonna read your dumb lock lamora book (laughs) i told you i was gonna read it mine i didn't write the thing everyone's telling me i'm mean for telling for telling people their food stinks and that yes 
I thought that said Jared farts. I thought it was a guy, like a wrestler. <laughs> uh, Ryan Turbo, she's a good friend of mine, says Doritos smell in the classroom. Uh, in the classroom is awful as well. I am fine with people eating any chips they want, but I don't want your freaking like. I don't want your your. I don't know whatever came in your thermos, your warm food. Like I just don't want it. I'm like, ah, it's gross. And can we also just can we also just say that um, fish is off limits? Like you can't microwave fish at work. I told them they can have a sandwich, but not a tuna sandwich. I don't. I don't. No, it stinks. <laughs> Booktuber fart jars are the new gamer Ugh. girl bath water. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Jimmy's gone. Oh my god, what happened? Do you see Jimmy that your camera just turned off? Dude, there I'm we... uh, I'm having troubles over here. I'm not. Gonna Dude, Jimmy on the struggle bus. But you guys can still see moi. Or you can hear me, right? Uh, we can hear you. We just can't see you. All right, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I, I think the fart jars are the new Gamer Girl bathwater because That's me and Philip had a very good talk about farts, and somehow he brought it all back, which was kind of crazy. Did you really? Why did y'all talk about farts? Did somehow Philip turned it into like a quality conversation, and everyone's like, only Philip could make fart jars like an actually intelligible conversation. We are back. Well, David would like very much for us to keep talking about this. Yeah. We have to get away from this fart jar topic. David, I, I would challenge you to embrace the fart jar. To be honest, <laughs> I don't like talking about this crap either, but something, I, I don't know. We, we were talking about people who try to gatekeep crap. Well, and also uh, one of the points that Stuart brought up in the chat was saying that a lot of us do start out reading only one series. And then that's how we end up finding book two, which I think Again, is, Pretty people need to not misunderstand. I have no problem with you just reading one series. I have a problem with people who read one series for the sole purpose of correcting other people who read those series. That bothers me. I, well, I yeah, and I also think that he's just saying that it's kind of a natural lineage. Like that's a very common origin story for a booktube booktuber or a booktube fan uh, that comes on and reads these things. But I definitely was that person, and uh, I regret that just a bit and i also you have to know there's always someone that knows more than you like always there's yeah. always somebody else that's gonna well, well i mean we go. should we should be aware of that just in general there's always someone who's better than you at whatever it is like no matter what yes. you do other than hosting long form live content on youtube oh. there is always someone better than you at what you do well, you're the best Jeopardy host of all time. Yeah. Are we, we going to do this? Are we going to just start yeah. praising no, each I'll other? Take it. Look, I'll take it. Trebek's dead. So, you know, <laughs> like, if yeah, and then alive, it's just you I'd and Daniel it. Green. So, look, if, if if Trebek was alive, I'd contest it, but he's not. So, I'm, I was heartbroken I'm, whenever I saw Daniel Green do Jeopardy. I was like, uh, this is yeah. Wrong. I mean, the thing is, I mean, he may have he may have done it before. I know Murphy did it on her channel before me, but it wasn't the same. I've talked about this before. Like, it's not the same. Like, it's not mm -hmm. in the it's not the same format. It's not. There aren't any rules. <laughs> it's really just kind of a trivia show that has categories, which is not the same as Jeopardy. Um. Yeah. In in my opinion, so. Well. I would uh, also implore a lot of people. You brought up Murphy. Uh, Murphy posted a video today that I thought was excellent. And it was like reading is different now. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of talking about like the social impact, uh, you know, of everything that we do in all these spheres, not just here, but TikTok and whatever else. And it's something that me, I think me and you've talked about quite a bit on the show. At least I know I brought it up. So like by a roll of the dice, it was probably you that I talked about it with. Uh, multiple times but i thought the video was actually really awesome so people should go check that out after this broadcast of course of course but there is okay. there is something to be said about the taxing nature of uh, uh reading socially for sure um i haven't seen it do you want to expound on that and yeah that, i mean it's essentially it? talking about how you know reading has become something else in a lot of ways like whenever you're solitary sitting in a room reading a book and you don't have to think about like oh I wonder what Discord thinks about. I wonder what uh, this booktuber thinks about this. I wonder what I'm going to make a video of. And and we kind of talked about this offline. We talked about how we read books differently now. And you were saying yeah. how you read so much faster, which is amazing because you read so slow even now. Oh, you I said know. you used to read even slower. I did. I did. I used to. It used to take me. I mean, like when I would really be in a mood to read, I could read a book in a week, but I didn't really try to do it anymore. Yes, Nuclear Katie. I love Nuclear Katie. Um yeah um 
Malazan book took me like before BookTube, a Malazan book would take me, you know, uh, like a month to read or so. Um, but uh, now, and we were talking about that because I used to, I used to be able to remember, remember character names, but yes. I can't remember character names anymore. So unless like the book is like really, like really impactful, I forget stuff really fast, much, much sooner than I did when I used to read slower. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think also part of that, I think is also the fact that I used to read series back to back to back to back to back. So I would read book one and then I would immediately pick up book two and I would not stop until I was done with it. And so you spent the same time, you spent a lot of time with the same characters over and over and over again within a short period of time, which kind of like solidified them. And I don't do that anymore. And so it is by the second book I've picked up after the after a book I put down, I have forgotten a lot of the characters' names, hmm. and I don't mean to. I still remember things that happen, but I but character names are I am not good at it anymore. Um, I used to be significantly better. I don't know if I've ever been good with names because I've watched entire TV shows multiple times, and I still don't know a bunch of character names. Like for instance, The Sopranos, I've watched multiple times, and I know some of the core characters' names, but there are still characters. Oh, yeah, that that in The Wire is another example of that. Like I don't know every single name. So, but I, I do agree with like plot points and such. And for me, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, but for me, when I read slower, I do way way better with retaining things i just finished all the pretty horses by cormac mccarthy today me and joanna were reading it like 10 to 20 pages at a time over the last like two months could tell you pretty much everything that happened in that book um maybe a couple details are a little bit murky because of the way it's written um but yeah that reading experience was awesome it was a 300 page book dude and it literally felt like i went on like an adventure like a That's multiple awesome. book adventure well, and another thing is it's like i wish people got more out of their pages in fantasy um, and I know you agree, but there's so many seven, 900, 1000 page tomes. And I'm like, surely this could have been more efficiently written. Sure. Well, no one pays me to edit their books. Um, I am happy to tell them when they've, when they've rambled on too long, um, <laughs> happy to, I am happy to be like, why is this that long? Um, I mean, you know, a lot of fantasy I read doesn't, I mean, doesn't, I'll use a really good example. The book that I'm that I'm reading right now that I'm about to finish. This is a five book series. This is two books, not one. Um, almost like there's been very little like action towards like the building war that's coming. And I've only got like 50 pages left. That war is not going to happen in this book. It could have. Guy could have extended it forever. But instead, this book's ending. And you know what? We'll pick it up in the next book. That's that is my most common complaint about the about these long books. I'm like, wh why can't this be two books? Like, why does this need to be one book? I, I don't understand why we need to have a 1,700-page uh, book. What if you just broke it into, like, three 500-page books? Yeah, and there's also something to, like, the constraints and the constructs of things. Um, I know Bangus Khan just recently read uh, Broken Earth with the fifth season, and I think him and Kyle were talking in my disc. We are kind of talking about how, like, it probably would have been a sweet duology. Like, it probably would have been great two books, possibly. And uh, I don't know, because like I don't know exactly where the breakpoints would be. I haven't put much thought into it. But you always do wonder like how much that kind of stuff like, oh, this has to be a trilogy. It has yeah. to be this uh, or a book has to be a thousand pages instead of two uh, 500 page books. I guess it all comes down to where the plot beats land and like um, what are good yeah. cutting points like I like I just like it used for again, people like get on to me. like Alan hates long books. Yeah, I do. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't used to like I used to the long like one of any money. And so if I bought a book, you know, longer books last longer. I have to buy a new book, you know, slower. I don't have to buy a new book as soon. And so long books were the, the longer, the better, because I just wanted to stay. You know, I didn't read as I didn't read as widely as I do now. And so, you know, I'm like, well, I want to stay with these people or whatever as long as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I don't like that because, you know, I could spend an entire month reading Way of Kings, but I have other crap to do like i just have i've got this stuff to do and so i do i don't like war and peace tb tbh so I don't, i'm not sure i hate it but i but i don't like it um but yeah i think there's a lot of books that i read that are like why is this as long as it is like the series and also when i read long price quartet and have the the story that that abraham told in 
you know, 1300 pages total across four books. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, you can tell something interesting in a short amount of time. Like it can be done. Now I'm not saying every story should be that long before people are like, well, some stories need longer to get to the, I know guys, let's just assume that I'm an intelligent person who understands there are exceptions. I know. And I know every structure is not for everything. I know. I know. But I do not think that all of them that are like 1,600 pages per book need to be 1,600. Thank you so much. My my wife, my wonderful wife has COVID. And so oh. we're trying to like quarantine like on opposite sides of the houses because I do not in fact have, have COVID. And I would like to keep it that way. Um, so well, I hope everyone stays healthy. Well, it sucks. <laughs> When like my buddy Matt was staying with us for a month while he found a place to live and he found a place to live and he came over to like do laundry because his laundromat was like packed or whatever. Came over one day for two hours. Next day, he's like, yeah, we can't play games this week. I have COVID. I'm like, son of a crap, Matt. You couldn't have figured that out before you came to my bloody house to watch la watch laundry. Son of a gun. The good thing is, is because because I've been hurt, um, I've been sleeping mostly in the recliner. And so the last couple of nights I didn't sleep in the bed. I slept in the recliner. So I think, I hope that that I dodged the bullet that way. Um, but yeah. So anyway, so anyway, I think some, I think some, some books need to be that long. Um, I just don't think all books need to be that long or most. I think yeah. many books that I read are too long. Yeah. I, Jay, Jay brought this up, uh, said surely song vice fire could have been more efficient. Probably. I mean, I don't think anything's perfect, right? So there's probably things that could be concise. I will say, at least with the Song of Ice and Fire, I feel like there are little details that I can get hung up on. Um, and it's worked, right? It's worked for a ton of people, which is great. But surely, yeah, I, I definitely think there's probably better ways of being more concise. And then it is a fine line, I will say. I think it's a harder thing to use less words. I think it, it, it's a much harder thing. And that's why short stories are so hard. Like, yeah, it's, I, I don't know how people write short stories that are good. Yeah. And it's gotta be fast too. It's like, you gotta go here, here, you know, assuming that you're doing this and straight down and then that following action has got to be really concise. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sure. that, that, that's a tough thing to do. Um, I love listening to people talk about writing short fiction and I just wrapped up exhalation by Ted Chiang last month, like right at the end of January. And I really, really enjoyed it. And he continues to be one of my favorite short fiction writers, even though I did, uh, I did like your story of your life and other stories or whatever it is. I liked it more than exhalation, which is a hot take. I think um, most people prefer exhalation, but for me, I just thought the stories were a little bit cooler. Exhalation really centered primarily around like determinism and free will, like a lot of the stories did, which was cool to have like a similar theme throughout all of them. But I think I preferred the, uh, the, the wider range of topics uh, in his for first collection. But yeah, Ted Chang is definitely a gem. Uh, by the way, Jay is a booktuber and Jay just posted a new video today. So everyone should go check that out and subscribe because Jay's awesome. Jay's a booktuber since when? Dude, have you not watched Jay's video? He's very funny. Jay's He's in my discord. He is hilarious. Jay, man, you gotta let me know. You gotta let me know. What the crap? I didn't know that. I'll fix it. Um, I will go. I will go sub. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't read a lot of short fiction. Um, I have. I'm coming to realize that I'm not a huge fan of Parker's short fiction. Like I like his novellas. Uh, I don't like them as much as his standalones, and I don't like his short stories as much as I like his novellas. Um, I I think I've given one of his short stories a five star. One. I don't like like I. I the worst thing I've read all year was a KJ Parker short story. And it was the last, it was the last thing I read. Like I, like I actively hated it. I'm like, I hate this. I just read 36 pages and I don't understand the purpose of it. I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on in this story. It's obtuse. And I think it's purposely obtuse and I hate it. So I'm very, yeah, mad. I saw you giving that low rating to KJ Parker. And I said, is it finally coming to an end? And I thought maybe he denied you as his audiobook narrator and you were getting revenge. no, no, it's just I just didn't like that short story like at all. So um, and, and again, I think it I think it depends on what author it is. I think there's some authors that people would like, you know, they don't care if it's like Kyle saying that he would take 200 more pages of Talk of Ice and Fire any day. I mean, Same. I probably would, too. I like most of what George writes, but there's something to be said about the conciseness of, of Caitlin getting from 
Winterfell to King's Landing in one chapter, and then you know Tyrion spending an entire book getting to one location. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like travel really in books, like getting from one place to another. I'd rather them just get there. Like, I don't need to see. I actually people. love traveling in I books. I hate it. That's probably I why I don't it. like Lord of the Rings. I'm like, when these people can get done walking? Like, Fair. Can we get somewhere and do something, please? It's like the Clerks 2 scene. Yeah, it's All my do is walk in those movies. It's my least favorite part of T when I'm talking about Alexander invading. Go ahead and y'all go ahead and hit that freaking bingo button. When I'm talking about Alexander invading Persian stuff, like my least favorite part is like he's getting from here to here. He's got to march 120 miles south to Egypt. Who cares? He got to Egypt and like went crazy and thought he was the son of Zeus. Strange. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh no it's not the journey it's the destination traveling is the no no it's you know what you're right when i next month when i go to rome my favorite part is actually going to be getting to rome once i'm there that sucks i don't want to be there at all rome <laughs> you know what i love the atlanta airport that's what i'm most excited about it's not journey over destination jennifer it's not and I wasn't I wasn't yelling at you. I'm I'm yelling at <laughs> I was like, man, you're really going no, hard Jen on poor Jennifer. Jennifer, here. Jennifer is is my uh is the um frick, what are those called? the the Patriot. wicker man that's built the effigy. She's my effigy oh. for, for Sanderson right now. Well, Sanderson has obviously uh poisoned Sanderson's not gonna crap what I think. He has poisoned the minds of the many. Um which, by the way, I saw someone earlier ask if I've ever invited Daniel Green on Chatting with Nuts. I have, and he did not get back to me. But I'm also thinking about reaching out to Brandon Sanderson and seeing if he'll come on Chatting with Nuts, because why not? I mean, that'd be hilarious. But it'll be awkward if he's signing autographs the whole time, because like I, I'll be like, hey, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Daniel Green had more subs than Brandon Sanderson. Dang, so he might come on last. You might have reached too high first. You think? Get Sando first, then Daniel Green. He's I got 500,000 subs. Like if Phillip's not going to reach down to you for if Phillip's not going to come on for with 20 K. I don't think that Daniel green necessarily likes talking on podcast about books. I, I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen him do it. I, th I think he, everything I've ever seen him do. That's long form has been, I mean, if it's not on his own channel has been like, um, about content creation, like being a YouTuber and stuff. I have opinions. Yeah. What are they? I mean, I have a bunch of them. I think that I think that Philip of Macedon is done wrong by history and it's all given to his stupid little kid. <laughs> Joanna wants to know if you prefer contained settings. Like people just hanging out in a house all day. I, I think so, because you hate traveling. I mean, I do like I do like books that take place in cities like City of Last Chances. One of my favorite reads last year was just in one city. So, yeah, I mean, maybe I haven't really thought about it. All of Long Price Quartet. And the thing is, like, let's let's not misunderstand again. It's not like if people travel in a book, automatic one star. That's not what it is. That's I, not how you that's not how rigid you are. No, I just okay. don't like excessive traveling. Uh yeah, I don't. Now, I like ship travel better than I like land travel because I like nautical fantasy, unlike the rest of Booktube. But um oh, someone else said that. They don't like travel on boats. I I like that also. Yeah, so, I think that's a fairly common thing i see people complain about that a lot especially in wheel of time people get very upset about the traveling in the first few books whereas yeah, i actually kind of liked it i i don't i don't i don't i mean i don't know i maybe i just don't like the countryside maybe i just have problems with non-urban settings possible uh tall guy reed says whenever an author is made to break a book into two for whatever reason i feel like i end up enjoying it way more than i would have if it had been one massive book not always but frequently find that i alex knows this guy this guy gets it I, I, i'll be honest I, I i don't know i don't know how i feel about that you you do you would not have liked you would not have liked the last book of malazan if it was one book and not dust of dreams plus cripple god well that's certainly an example where i think the split makes a lot of sense but it's ludicrous to have that long of a book for me kingdoms of death and ashes of man is what i'm oh. thinking of for sun eater where i oh. felt like it made each actually ashes of man was fine but kings of death to me ended up feeling very one note because you could tell he was front loading a lot of the stuff that had to happen to get to the fallout after and Ash is a man. And if it had been one book, I think it would have been really great. But because it was split, all the one tone was in one of the books. Yeah. So it kind of just wore me out. You know what I'm saying?
Yeah. Someone is telling me not to read Faithful in the Fallen, which I read and loved. Yeah, I was going to bring that up because there's what? quite because a bit of traveling. Guess, guess how much of that traveling I remember. None of it. I don't remember a second of it. Not not one. I, I realize there's a lot of traveling. Like I, like, I get it. I don't remember any of it at all because the rest of it was interesting enough, um, I thought. They do uh, do a lot of running away in that book. I mean, they do. And guess what? I don't think about a lot because it's not my favorite part of the book. They're running away. I like it when they're defending a city from, you know, the rampaging hordes or trying to take a city from the rampaging hordes or they're on the battlefield. I like that stuff. Like, I don't like the, I just, I don't like the traveling stuff. So. Yeah. Someone actually pointed out to me, Faithful and Fallen, like how often it's like running away. And I was like, yeah, damn. <laughs> it's yeah, like but, you just, you yeah, just... But you know what's not in it? Trollocs. There's no Trollocs in it. Sure, so that's true. The Kasharim or and it's just the first. It's just the first two books. They're running away a lot in Faithful and Fallen. Yeah, a little bit more strategy and kind of like making their place for their stands in in the last books. At least the one I'm thinking of, the one battle I'm thinking of. Sure, and you know what? Like running away. Like I'm, I'm more I'm more okay with that than just like we're gone. We're on our way to the Emerald City. Let's go and walk this way and go see this. And like, if it's a travelogue, just tell me it's a travelogue, and then I can. I can know going into it. What do you think about Rainwild? Jennifer here saying Rainwild would have, she thinks it would have worked better with two instead of. Uh, maybe, maybe. I always feel weird saying this because like, I know we're talking about this, but this isn't something that I'm hyper aware of or critical of. So even though like, it's fun to say those things, like I don't, I don't feel confident enough to say like, yeah, it'd definitely be better as two, but possibly, possibly because I think it's book two. I can't remember which book it was. But I did feel like I was like, this is a weird bridge. Like, this is a weird book to be done. It, there should be more here. But um, I'm not so sure if it'd be two or three or maybe one. I, I don't know. Hard to say, really. <laughs> Jordan Darrett says, your combined subs are 400K less than Green's channel. Ha, put some respect on his name. Sorry. I, you're yeah, right. I, we're, we're, I'm, not, I'm not dumpstering the man. No, uh, we, are. we are. We are throwing shade upon his name right now. No, I was just meaning that I don't think that he's interested in, in like long form, like other podcast or whatever book talk. That's all. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to take this comment as not being with a serious Sincere. tone. Probably not. I mean, Alan, here's is, the thing. What? I'm dense. Oh, I'm dense. I mean, it, you could be right. Like Jordan could be a, a huge acolyte, and <laughs> and and could genuinely be offended that we are not. No, Jordan's cool. Uh, I think I have talked to them in Petrick's Discord. I think, I think, and definitely been in the comments before. No, I, I do like to be clear that I that I'm not dumpstering Daniel Green because it's very easy to dumpster Daniel Green. A lot of people do it. It's very easy to dogpile on him. I don't really have opinions. Um, but I did reach out to him for the show to see. That was a long time ago, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I reached out twice. I reached out at the very beginning, which is probably a little silly. And then I reached out probably about a year ago now. And uh, at least I think I did. And I, and I hadn't heard back, um, which is fine. I don't care. I, I don't blame anyone not wanting to take three hours out of their Friday. It's one of the reasons why I'm very hesitant to ask, like, to continue to pursue, like, Robin Hop, for instance, because it's like, does she really want to spend a Friday night for two hours? She, she would probably do an hour, I would assume. Yeah. You know. So people are commenting about how much traveling is in Faithful and the Fallen. You know what? Okay. Like, I'll, with, I'll retract my statement and say that Faithful and the Fallen is an exception. There you go. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, you already said there was a, exceptions to. Yeah, the there are exceptions. Are like, norm, normally, I do not enjoy that. Um, I apparently did in Faithful and the Fallen. So. <laughs> and Amanda loves slog traveling. Yeah, I, I there's a lot of traveling in the second Baker series, and it's some of my favorite stuff. Like the talks around the campfire and stuff is pretty good. Actually, Black Company has a decent sure. amount of traveling. Sure, but, but yeah, but it's very fast. Like Croker, Croker narrates it with you know the standard Glenn Cook, very sparse prose. I mean, that's true. Yeah, that is true. And but but the thing is, the Black Company, large also large of what we what we like about Black Company is those that campfire talk among among the uh, the the brethren. When I and just see if you can control yourself, Jimmy. Just when I 
with what I'm about to say. Okay. When I run a D&D game, what I enjoy the most and what I force, what I force, like, I, I love campfire talk when they'll sit around and we stop like, oh, what can I hit? Like, what are my stats? Where's my treasure? And they'll actually freaking role play something. Some of the only times they'll role play with each other, like people will role play with NPCs, but it's like, it's like, Sometimes it's like four people are playing four different games with me and no one's playing a game with everybody else. <laughs> and so campfire, like campfire talks are the, the, the way that that is not traveling. That is not traveling. That is like, it, if it's That's war, it, it's different. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So campfire talks are, 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 I like them normally. Um, so I, I don't know. I just, maybe, maybe people have to be interesting and there's nothing interesting about, four hobbits and a wizard whose magic powers are suspect at best and who else is there aragorn like whatever aragorn strider like yes yeah, he's way cooler when he's strider um, he, he leans a little more I, I mean i i think he's cooler and then he's like i'm aragorn and then there's a whole bunch of people with a bunch of similar sounding names which is common in fantasy you know but anyway Traveling as it ought to be written. Traveling as it ought to be written. <laughs> Glenn Cook, traveling as it ought to be written. Did you finish Shadows Linger? I finished Shadows Linger. And yes. Alan, Alan. Five stars right here. I have seen the way and oh, the truth and the it's light. It's so good, dude. I it's so interesting because I saw a couple of reviews where people rose. said they didn't like book two as much. They said so, that they liked book one more. Those people are, those are also probably people who love like book five or book six. Um, it's shadows linger is the best of the trilogy. They don't like it. If they don't like it, it's because it's not like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why someone wouldn't like it. Um, it's amazing. And I'm so sorry that you're going to take the step back in white rose. White rose. It's is that big of a step back. Cause that's white rose is not as good as shadows. I think white rose, is my least favorite of the first three. Oh, I hate to hear that because I, I, I said this to, I think Jake today, I said, if I didn't have such a chaotic TBR right now, I would literally binge black company. I would just binge all 10. Because so there's good. something about Glenn Cook, and I know his writing bothers some people. For me, I find it to be so easy to consume and addictive. Mm -hmm. I love, I love the bounce back between like a proper POV, like a third person POV, to going into the anal recording. I also Booker. really liked that in Shadows Linger, and yeah. it's it's really only done in that book that way, um, oh, where really? you have the, where you have the third person and then the first person. Yeah, most most uh, uh what if this chat thread that I apparently am a part of on my phone stopped going off. This is a crazy thing, but have you ever considered turning your ringer off? Okay. So here's, here's so this is what someone always says. Someone always says that I don't like to do that because then I will forget to turn it back on. And if I do not hear it, I will miss like people, like I will miss actually important calls or important messages. So I like to keep it on, but every now and then people that I do not like being put in text groups. All right. It, there comes a point where I do, and guess what? It's going to stay off, and I'm going to miss something like every. Now, time. I will remind you at the end of the broadcast. Well, the problem is, is that I don't have a freaking iPhone. But all you iPhone users, you guys commit, like you guys are aggressors because what you don't understand is that people who don't have iPhones, every time you react, so you hold your little thing and you pop up a ooh the heart. It sends me a text letting me know that you reacted to what I did. It doesn't just put a little heart on it. It <laughs> sends me a text saying so-and-so loved, and then it quotes the whole freaking text back. I hate it so much. I hate communicating with people who own iPhones. <laughs> Which now includes my wife. Oh, she, she, she turned her back on you. Wow. Damn. I hate it. Like, stop. It's <laughs> fine if it's one person. But when people like like group text, it's like, let's put the whole family in a text. No, don't do it. Because then everyone sends something and then every single person has to respond to the thing. No, now hold on. It's the, I don't use Android. I do not use Android because it's so customizable and I can jailbreak. <laughs> no. I use Android because iTunes is the most unintuitive user unfriendly program I have ever used in my entire life. Other, the only thing that's more user unfriendly is the multiplayer in a souls game. Other <laughs> than that, it's iTunes. And because of that, because 
I had an iPhone 4 and an iPhone 5, but because I just couldn't drag music from the <laughs> folder on my phone to the folder on my computer, and I just like, you did decide it, and you did it. I'm like, no, I'm done. It made me so angry. I'm like, boom, Samsung. And I've used a Samsung since then because of that nonsense. <laughs> like, you know what would be fine? Like, Apple doesn't have to get rid of it. And, like, I'm not saying that all, like, iPhone users should die. But you know what they should do? They should just make it to where it doesn't send a text. <laughs> they're trying They're trying to push you to this rant to you to cave to buy the iPhone. I'm not going to get an iPhone. I hate it. I hate it. I don't want, I don't have a Mac. I hate Macs. I hate people that have Macs. I hate everything about an Apple product. <laughs> I have so many Macs in front of me right now. I know now. you do. I know you do. The fact that we're friends is one of the miracles of the ages. Like, <laughs> I hate, I hate it. Anytime I ask someone, oh, what's a good program to do this? Like, uh, I, I, bleh. No, I'm not using I, bleh. I'm not using that. I'm not using an Apple program. I'm not. You want to know why? Your computer's not worth $2,000, Steve. <laughs> God damn it, Steve. Oh, man. I hate Mac. So you, you know what else is stupid? There is no reason that the shutdown window button needs to be in the top freaking left. Put it in the top right where everyone knows where it is. That's where it's been since the dawn of time. Freaking Univax close window button was in the top right. <laughs> I'm so used to being on the left now that I hate when it's on the right. No. That, <laughs> th you know what you are? You're someone who is so accustomed to eating freaking, you're, you're someone who's so accustomed to having like 12 course meals and crap coated in caviar that you don't even know what a hamburger is anymore. You're like, what on I earth love is hamburgers. food? No, you don't. <laughs> How no, dare you, you question it. my love? Go ahead and close your window in the top left, Jimmy. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying. All I do is hit Command Q. It's so easy. What is Command? <laughs> it's you it's mean a, Control. It's better than Control. It's, it's command. the same key, Jimmy. Bro, I have Control and Command. I have more options. That's what I want with my analysis paralysis. More choice. <laughs> I just want their, I just want to know the key, the keystroke. And this freaking text thing is still going on. Stop reacting. Stop. Just turn the so and so over. laughed at. Blah, 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 blah. Stop it. It wasn't funny. Don't laugh at it. Joanna did have a uh, fantastic I, comment here. <laughs> she said, Joanna laughed at Alan's comment. And Joanna, I would unsubscribe to your channel if that had sent a notification on my phone. Ah, I thought you were going to say I'd unsubscribe if I was subscribed in the first place. I was oh, like, damn, wow. I should have done, done that. Wow. My goodness. So you don't own Apple stock is what No, I, mean. I don't own Apple products. Everything need, you need, you need app. No, if I switch to an iPhone, I would then need a freaking Mac. And then I'd need like an Apple car. And then I'd need a little Apple house and I need an Apple security system. And I'd have to go buy a freaking Apple camera and some Apple lights and some Apple pizza that I'm trying to freaking eat, but I don't have a soda and I don't want to eat pizza with coffee. <laughs> pizza with coffee? That's all I have to drink in front of me, Jimmy, is coffee. Where did pizza come from? It door dashed and Christina when I, when Christina came in here she brought me pizza. Okay. Where's the but pizza? I don't have anything to drink so it's just been sitting here getting cold. And I texted I texted Christina twice to be like, "Hey, could you bring me a soda because I can't walk?" Um and she hasn't answered. How how was your physical therapy today? Good. My leg burns, which is good because yeah. having worked out in the past, I know people think that I've never ever seen the inside of a gym or held like a weight, but I do know that when something uh, iTunes didn't even exist. Good, good. You see, you see, I they got rid of it because of my fury. I killed iTunes. iTunes confirmed. I will accept a medal and a golden crown from anyone at any <laughs> time. You're welcome. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was good. So my leg burns. Um, the, it was my first one. So we just did a whole bunch of, uh, stretches. Yeah. And they were very uncomfortable, but they hurt less the more I did them because part of it is like, I'm afraid it's going to hurt or I'm afraid it's going to damage something permanently. Yeah. That but was one of my biggest things when I, my, I was recovering my knee is like, I was like, all I want is to not get re injured. Exactly. Because so it's so much easier to get injured because you are in the healing process. You're not 100%. Right. And I don't know if they said this to you, but they basically told me, like, if you re injure your knee, 
like you are going it this is going to be way like this is going to be awful for you for the rest of your life and it's like yeah. okay like no pressure <laughs> and you're like is this good pain or bad pain because there is good pain in physical therapy at times right yeah or maybe i should say discomfort is probably a better word uh to use there and it, it's a mental struggle i remember like going to walk and it hurting so bad that I was like, Oh, I'm just never going to walk again. Like I'm just, this is not happening. I'll never bend my knee again. This is how it's going to have to be. And I'm going to have a straight robot leg. Ugh. 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 Like I'm like, I've just never, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not good at being injured. Um, I don't like being <laughs> what injured. A statement. Like I'm like, I'm not like, I'm not good at like massive alterations to my, like to the status quo in my life. Like I, like I, I like I'm just not good at that. Like, again, like I have autism and that is one of the things that autistic people uh, are the least equipped to deal with uh, is huge state changes. Um, so I, um, yeah. So she always like, if you have a sharp pain, like stop because then it's hurting. But if it always just like, it just feels like everything. It feels like the muscles connecting my leg to my, to my um, pelvis mm -hmm. have not, you know, been moved or been locked into a single position for 10 weeks from sitting in a stupid wheelchair. Um, so yeah, I'm having to relearn how to walk. We did like the, the thing is, the thing is I don't know how to walk. Like I can put weight on my, on my foot, but I do not know how to walk. My hmm. brain has forgotten it. So we did some, um, you know, neuro pathway training today where I lift, lift up my leg and bring it down on the top of bring my foot down on the top of a, of a cone. Um, like it was in the orange cones, just getting my leg used to, cause that's what legs do when they move, they move and oh. they, they bend in two places, the hip and the knee. Um, oh, I guess, and the foot. So it bends in three places. So, but when I haven't been using that, it, uh, so anyway, it's just trying to get used to that crap. So um, I've read I iRobot and seen the movie. It's good. Um, but yeah, so a lot of stretches. So my, my, my leg's on fire um, yeah. because what was hardest was the leg lifts, like literally just lifting the weight of my leg with the muscles in my leg alone. And that is when I realized that there aren't any muscles in my leg anymore. Like it was so hard just to lift the weight of my leg with the muscles in my leg. I have a Roomba. I love my Roomba. Um, my cats won't ride on it, which makes me sad. Um, <laughs> but I do have a Roomba. Anyway, I'm, it's warm now because stupid talking about how did we even get on that? Oh, because my phone kept going off because people are reacting in this freaking thing to why does it do that? I don't know why it does that. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. You can't take the shirt off. I, I can. It's too hot, Jimmy. It's well, you can hot. take the undershirt off, but you got to leave the Hawaiian. Huh? I am not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here bare chested hey, with a Hawaiian hey, shirt. Show a little hamburger. Show a no. little that, that burger right here. I'm not doing it. Come on. Oh, thank you, Christina. Turned the fan on for me. This is nuts after dark. We could. We it, can. It is not nuts after dark. It is nuts after dark. You'll be all no, right. Nuts after dark is when you do when you talk to yourself, isn't it? It is, and I need to do another one of those soon. Um, no, you don't. Just why, have why not? I mean, just have me on it. <laughs> like if, if you're if you if you're feeling if like other people are getting you down, just have me on it. You can basically have it be nuts after dark, and I'll just take offense at things you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, th speaking of offense, I, I have to admit something to you, and uh, you know it is a little wrong of me to do this in front of two hundred people, but. Um, in the thousands that'll watch it after, but <sighs> I didn't know how I was going to break this to you. Did you watch my recent video? I did. What'd you think? Pretty good, right? Yes. You're going to read long parts quartet. That makes me happy. What was my number one? Uh, oh, freaking green bone. Right. I didn't think they were in a specific order. Well, they're not. They were, okay. you know, I knew Jade City get the biggest crowd pop. So I kind of had to save it for last. Oh, but, yeah. You got to play, um, play them analytics. Yeah, about Jade City. Did you start reading already? No, not yet, because I'm waiting for for Philip. I'm I'm actually going to be reading it. <laughs> you are not going to be reading it with Philip and and Bookborn. I I need you to tell me that you are not being serious right now. Are you freaking kidding me? Hey, man, you know sometimes you just got to. I do am texting Philip right now. Listen, calm down. I knew, I knew it'd be, I knew, I knew you'd be angry, but he asked me politely. He said, he actually, 
<laughs> he texted me after my video <laughs> when it went live and he said, would you like to join a read along with me and Hillary? Let me, let me tell you what Philip does. So Philip's going to read Sinlin Ascends with me. Philip invites other people to read alongs with me, but, but reading, reading an, a manga, reading a manga about the Sen, the Sengoku era like, which was my freaking, like, major in college. And also someone who was, you know, everyone says is a weeb because I watch anime and read manga. No, no, no. I'm not <laughs> going to get invited to the weeb chat. Like, I don't have any freaking freaking knowledge about that. But he's just going to invite you into this. In, in the... <laughs> wow, Philip, should have done that after I recorded your audiobook. So... <laughs> Let's look for some surprises within the within the text, shall we? I cannot believe that. You waited till I was on this freaking show before you told me that. <laughs> he said, I just watched your new series video. Would you like to join me, Bookboard, and Taylor for Made Between the Pages when we discuss Green Moon Saga? I'll be starting Jade City in about three weeks. I have literally said online multiple times that I am also reading Greenbone because Charmaine is my friend. <laughs> Alan, this, no, this, this is why this is why y'all keep getting so many freaking subs because y'all keep doing these high profile collabs without me. Seriously, Alan. No, no, Jimmy. No, we're moving on. We're not <laughs> talking about Greenbone anymore. No, I think this is a good place for us to <laughs> look at the cat. Turn your camera back on. Come back. Come back. I'm not coming back. Jimmy. Come I'm back. eating my pizza. Well, you can eat your pizza, but you know. Alan, would you like to join us? No, I don't <laughs> want to join. I want to eat this cheese stick. Listen, three weeks, March 1, what do you got going on? Do you think, let me tell you what I got going on. I'm taking 35 children to Italy for, for nine days. And then I'm going to be gone for another four days at the end of the month to Orlando to take the same stupid children on a stupid Latin competition. <laughs> Listen, so, yeah, a... you're right. I can join that ridiculously long book readathon read along during the busiest month I have all year it's and the least amount of reading pages. Time. It's only 500 pages. Jade City. I've read Jade City. Oh, we're just reading Jade City at first. That's all. March one. Come on, read it on the plane. You got nine hours. No. Uh, first of all, I don't need to read it because I read a recap recently because I told Charmaine I was going to start reading Jade War. Yeah, because you've already read Jade City. Yes, in October of 2020. So why are you so mad at me for reading it the first time? You didn't wait for the first time you did it without me. Philip, I mean, Jimmy. Oh, how dare you. Jimmy, first of all, you know that's not why I'm mad at you. You know I'm not mad at you because you're reading Jade City. What? What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, you, you're joining the the Wars of Light and Shadow read-along, right? No. You're reading Curse of the Mystery. You said you were. I said I wanted to. Yeah, but we're like, we waited a year for you to start. You liar. Dude, your thing, I, your thing I was stalled like, for a year. Bro, I. <laughs> Amanda says, I'm mad at Jimmy for reading Jade City. Amanda, your aces. And David wants to know is that Italian cheese bread, Alan? Yes, it is. And Marcos, it is top 10 anime betrayals. That's what just happened here. I, what? I don't understand why it's a betrayal. I mean, I knew I was nervous it's to not, tell you. It's but... not. It's not. It's a betrayal that you're reading it with Philip and Bookborn. That's the betrayal. I love Bookborn. Philip's okay. He's not bad. Jimmy. What? How many subs do both of them have? More than me? I don't know. More than 20K. Both of them. This, this, I don't Listen. like, upward, I don't like upwardly mobile, Jimmy. I need you to come down here with the rest of us in the gutter. Listen, if you could just break five figures, like I could do something for you. You know what I mean? Jimmy, I got like seven subs total last week. Like what? that's, that's really? the best I can do. Yes. Like Jimmy, I love everybody that watches my channel, but there's no, there's no broad appeal. Who wants to listen to this dude talk about books? No one's ever heard of nobody, nobody, Jimmy. I mean, I think. And guess what, Jimmy? I don't have the buff bod that you bring in. I don't have the Bobby B and the light, the nice like, like la exactly. I don't have the gun show. I don't have the. 
I don't talk about things like, oh, hello, well, welcome to this this class. In this semester, you will be we will be discussing the the all of the the zugmas and hyperbatons present in uh, <laughs> the original work of you know. I don't have like the tweed jacket and you know, like I'm a forty year old. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not actually mad. <laughs> I think you're the best YouTuber I know, Alan. You know what, Jimmy? I'm reading the comments. People are people are happy that you made me explode into into fury. So <laughs> I did build to it. I did build to it rather well. Let's be fair. People are so rude. Sometimes you gotta let let the beat build, you know. I can I cannot believe you knew that beforehand and you told me on the air. I cannot believe you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were voxering the other day and I was like I'm going to tell him. And I was like, nah, I'll wait. Because <laughs> he's going to be so. <laughs> what okay, is book, it about Philip? Book Jeopardy doesn't bring in the, the, the subs and droves, Evie. The only thing that I'm confident, like on my channel, the only thing that I really, really like and think is really good is Jeopardy. But people don't care. I wish people did. I, That's not true. You had like 400 people watch a Jeopardy live once. I've never had that many, but I have had like 200 before. And, that, and that's fine, but I've, I mean, I've, I'm not, I'm not dissing anybody who watches it, but it, it is not something that brings, like, it is not the milkshake that brings the boys to the yard. Well, Nuclear Katie says, Alan, I think you're hilarious. Your channel is great. Now that I might, that might be because I'm also autistic, but you are great, LMAO. Guys, People I'm not, love I'm, you. I'm not, I know, I'm not trying to throw a pity party. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying. I know it sounded like that. I'm not. I'm definitely not. It's more um, your hate for Philip, right? No, because I've I talked. No, because Philip's gonna watch this back and be like, "Man, like, does Alan actually hate me?" No, I don't hate Philip. I love Philip. You I hate people Phillip. reading with Philip. I hate that so many people talk. That Philip talks with so many people about things that I also like, and that I don't get. I don't get to talk about them. <laughs> like, I think that 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 is what I hate. That is what I hate. I do think it's funny. Jimmy, Jimmy, didn't you suggest that he read Vinland Saga? This is true. And then he said, wait, wait, wait. That's a great idea, Jim. Let me go over here to Murphy. You get that sweet sub boost. I think it was the last time I was talking to Philip. He was like, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I, I just received a bunch of subscribers the other day. And I go, Philip, it's probably because... <laughs> You're collabing with a booktuber who destroys the algorithm. <laughs> I mean, destroy it in a positive manner. And that's probably what it is. And he was like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, guys, I'm, I'm not witching and moaning because I realize that, like, there are people who have fewer subs than me. I like I, I understand that. Like, I'm not I'm not I'm not poo pooing on uh, I, I'm not trying to be ungrateful. I am grateful. I'm just. I don't know. Like, I'm, <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure. Here's the problem. I think I live in a world where, like, I'm not sure. It, I'm not sure it does bother me, but I think it might, but also doesn't. So I think it's. I think it's Schrodinger's bothered. Um, <laughs> I'm both bothered and not bothered at the same time. Is there a chance that it bothers you? And you don't want to admit it. I mean, no, because the thing is, is if I had to talk to people about stuff, then that is more work, more crap I'd have to do during the day. Um, and I already, well, no, I. I Get your bingo cards out. I already don't have a ton of time, Jimmy. So. <laughs> um, anyway, um, no, I don't like. I, I I do like Philip. I don't dislike Philip. I'm 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 teasing. But I wonder if Philip ever feels bad, like how how much crap we give him. Um, I I don't I don't think so. I think he knows it's all good fun. Or, or he is so far above us into the stratosphere that he doesn't like. He couldn't possibly. It's like being bothered by gnats. You know, it's just one of these, and then he's done with it. Well, I'm going to read along with him, so I know he cares about my opinion. But I, yeah, I could see that. Okay, so so Jimmy, here here is it. This is this is me in my, in my real life. I like people inviting me to things, even if I'm not going to go. Like I like being able to be like, like. You want the option to say no? No, I I want I want I want people to be to, to be to be like, hey, you want to do this? So that I know that they want me there, but so that I can not do it because I don't want to go. Like. So I like it when my friends say, hey, you want to come? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to go. But I, I think, I'm glad that you invited me. I don't want to go do that. I mean, um, I have asked you to read along with books before. I'm like, we should buddy read this. And you're like, that book's too friggin' long. No. So here's the problem with, with us buddy reading. Like, I do want to buddy read stuff. 
the problem is, is we are on different schedules and you will, you tend to get to the book before I can. And then, and then you're done and then you're done with it because you read it in a day. Um, because I mean, you're, you're, you're the, you're much more than I am. Uh, this is what I'm going to pick up today. Like, this is what I feel like reading type thing. Yes. Um, yeah. and that's, that's, you know, oh my gosh, thank you so much, but I don't know your mom. And so I feel awkward. So it's a no, but I appreciate the invite. Look at that. Amanda, Amanda's good people. Um, she is great people. We're not, we cannot end up talking about our crippling insecurities again, Jimmy, on, Why on not? chatting with nuts because it's only been an hour. That's like hour three. That's well, here, maybe, maybe, the, maybe this will, this will bring it some perspective from my side, I guess. Um, I never got invited to anything like whenever social things became a normal, which is around like sixth grade. Cause I started going to middle school and our school expanded. So I went to a school where my class was like 20 people for elementary one through five. And then I went to middle school and I was friends with a, I'm best friends still to this day with a very popular kid who had a lot of friends. Everybody wanted to be friends with him. Cause he, you know, he's good looking, funny guys, wealthy, parent drives him to school with a cool car, all this stuff. And I never, like I was always next to him, but I no one ever saw me kind of deal. And he never treated me poor. He's my greatest friend in the world. I literally love him so much. Like I can't put into words what he's done for me. Um, but I never felt like anyone looked at me. Like I never felt like anyone saw me. It was like, oh, he's friends with the poor kid. That's interesting. Why would he do that? And I remember like not being invited to things. It would bother me so much. And uh, my friend Andrew, he's a guy I do dudes talking manga with. He would just bring me anyways. And it was like the greatest vengeance of all time because then people would acknowledge me, but it would be in a bad way. They'd be like, why are you here? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm real. You're interacting with me. This is fun. And uh, I always thought that if I had that opportunity, they'd end up liking me. Guess what? They, 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 they didn't like me. And it was just awkward. And I would eat all the, the potato chips at the parties so that no one else could have them. We True were story. friends. We were friends in high school with like two, two of us. There were four of us that played D&D. Uh, two of us were... Um, poor or not poor like um but like you know normal middle class um and then two were we were poor compared to the other two let's put it that way um and then two that were rich and one of the rich guys it was his house we always went to because his he lived upstairs and his dad lived downstairs so um but his dad was like Danny Tanner if Danny Tanner was secretly like a super villain like if Danny Tanner <laughs> super. If, if Danny Tanner like secretly killed people that spilled things on his rug that is this guy's dad and I love him like he like but he would turn on a dime and like scream at us for being messy like but he's he like he would come while we're playing D&D and vacuum around us like <laughs> the kind of guy he was um but uh he was the guy's house that we were at was really, really popular. He was just a social butterfly that would fit in with literally everybody. Um, and he was also the guy that doesn't like to say no. And so we would be like, okay, we're playing D&D. &D. And then we would get there and I would hear the door open downstairs and the sound of other teenagers. And I'm like, Pope, why are there people here and he's like well uh you know they, they want to have a party and like i just i thought we could like you know we could like they could use like part of that i'm like i'm like pope did you freaking double book your house knowing we're playing dnd &D? and the freaking the freaking popular rich kids came up to you and and needed a place to drink their beer and you didn't you were too afraid to tell them that we were playing D D." it's exactly what happened i'm the one that had to chase the people out i was mean to them until they left because I'm like, are you freaking kidding me, Pope? Like, are you kidding me? I love Pope. He is, he is. What a name. Still, I mean, his name, his name, that's not his name. They couldn't say his name in like kindergarten and they, oh, end, they end up saying Pope. And so that's just what he goes by. Um, still one, still one of my best friends, like great, great guy. Um, and we laugh about that all the time. But I was just like, why? Like, just say no to these people. Stop being, you know whatever but i um you know i i ran a i ran a game all through high school and after high school and um and it goes like so my parents don't ever listen to anything i say still um <laughs> my parents don't know anything about me this despite the fact that i like i have liked the same thing since i was tiny and so my thing is i i why are we like coming clean about our feelings and crap? Um, I do um, like, I don't, 
like not being important or not feeling like I am important to to something that's let I me mean, that's why I scream in your chat like freaking notice me senpai um <laughs> and you know because I mean, that's how I grew up like like my bro my, and I love my brother now um but my brother liked to like the outdoors like my dad my brother is is smart like I am but also good at math and science and likes the outdoors so my brother's the wunderkind and you know I hate the outdoors and being dirty and I like to read and I'm not good at math um and then, you know, my mom, my parents divorced and, you know, my mom also doesn't listen to me. She doesn't listen to me now. She asked me the same question if I'm a seer. I'm like, mom, I literally answered that question for you like a week ago. Mom, please stop asking me my job. It's fine. It's fine. It's the same as it was last year uh, or last la last week. Um, and so I don't know. I hate being irrelevant, really. Sure. Um, and that's, I mean, it's, that's, like, I like the job that I have in that I am good at it. And what the hardest thing when considering leaving my job is that I will not be good at my new job hmm. um, because it is always easier for me to deal with something that I am aware of and I know how terrible it's going to be than dealing with something that might be more terrible the unknown. because I have made so many bad decisions in my life that I have just regretted afterwards. And so instead I'm doing anything. Um, so, I mean, I like, like, I like, that I am good at my current job. And I also like it when the kids really like what I do. Like every now and then, I mean, I have years where the kids don't care and it's fine. Um, but the years where the kids do care are better because then it's like, I'm making an impact. Like I'm, it's obvious that I'm doing something because, because the only benefit you have as a teacher is making an impact. So it's nice when you see that right away, instead of like 20 years later where they're like, Oh man, Mr. Walker, I really remember you. Like, cool. Like I don't even know who you are anymore because it was 20 years ago and I have Alzheimer's and you know, only have like, one arm and one leg. So thanks. I could have used your, I could have used your, your thank you 20 years ago, child. Um, anyway, I don't, I don't know where this went. Uh, well, I think it comes back to the, like, and you don't want to feel irrelevant. You want to feel noticed and, and included. I think that those are pretty natural human. I mean, yeah, but I mean, but that's, that's like saying like people have to include me in everything. They, they freaking don't like, like I do. What I would feel betrayed about is if you read black company with somebody else and then had a chat with somebody else instead of me, because I've read black company, black company. I read before Malazan. That was one of the only series I read in high school was Black Company. Um, I wasn't the guy who only read that to correct people. I kept reading it because Soldiers Live wasn't even out. So we just kept reading it because it was so good. Um, I do want to read um, Silver Spike with you when you get when you get to it because it's short and I can probably fit it in no matter which, where it is. Which, uh, which Black Company book is that? It's for – it's like a standalone. It takes place – it's written by some characters or – it is – it follows some characters that are in white rose, but it's not the company. It's it's so people, some people think, say it's a standalone. It can be slotted anywhere. I always read it as book four um, because it deals with stuff in the white rose, like right after it, but it does not have the, the company isn't in it. Um, I mean, most of the company isn't in it. There's a couple, I guess. Um, so yeah, I always read it as book four. <laughs> so help me i've already told jake that i've already told jake that that when i catch up then i'll talk to jake also but the three of us would have some good discussions oh that. yeah i think that's a trio we could put together i think it'd For be sure. a lot of fun there, there, there's a lot to talk about in black company at least in the first two books I uh, love black company. and we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier but i mean i just loved shadows linger i mean what a solid book so i good. loved the edgar Allan poe vibes i loved um almost felt like tales from the crypt a bit like that was it really felt like cool. lovecraft like the lovecraftian like black castle like what is going on and had a shocking moment like books don't shock me as often as they used to so when they do it's like kind of a standstill and i was uh i did physical and audio and i was pulling into my garage after jujitsu and i was kind of zoned out i was tired and like that moment was happening and i just kind of sat in the parked car with it running and i was like no it's not like this major i don't want to hype this up to make it sound like some big twist or something it's just a little subtle character decision that it kind of like dawns on you how much the character has changed and you're like i thought they were terrible but i didn't realize they were this terrible and then you know it's always fun to put yourself in that person's shoes and being like well what would i have done talking about terrible people seriously the 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 simple evil of just the desperate like marin yes. shed man marin shed 
What a good character. Desperation is something I would like to see a little bit more of. In fantasy, a lot of time, desperation is almost like a, a virtue. Like you're desperate to succeed. So then you fail forward and you do these things, which is cool. I mean, I've always said Kaladin and Stormlight fails forward and I love the way he fails. And I, I stand by that. But with Shadows Linger, Shed is the example of when desperation leads to way worse things and a lot of television shows that i enjoy i think also go that way um the wire comes i've said that twice now tonight but uh that comes kind of to mind breaking bad would be another uh, um really good example of desperation leading to some really horrific decisions and shed for me the contained story of shed is one of my more favorite character stories probably so in a contained good. novel yeah. so good i was really His whole impressed. character arc is really really good you know who sucks asa Dude, Asa does suck. <laughs> butt cheeks, dude. And Raven also sucks. Thank uh, you, Jimmy. Raven's we are back. friends once again, sir. I brought it all back, guys. Brotherhood restored. Well, Thank got him. you. Raven sucks. I'm also reading Long Price Quartet with Philip. That's not true. No, he's that already, one's a he's lie. Already had a... <laughs> I should have did one truth, one lie. Do you lie. know who you should have read, read it with? You should read it with Joanna, who is still a holdout. You should. She reads everything with you as it is. Just suggest it. <laughs> well, we're starting The Crossing March 1st. So oh, my know. gosh. What even is that? That's the second book in the Border Trilogy for uh, McCarthy. Oh, my gosh. Cormac McCarthy is still alive. He'll still write books tomorrow. <laughs> So is Daniel Abraham. I realized that as I was saying it, Jimmy. <laughs> I was hoping that you weren't going to respond to it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, did I miss some news? <laughs> I mean, no. <sighs> for all of our Expanse fans out there, speaking of Daniel Abraham, uh, the Kickstarter for the Expanse comic books apparently destroyed the goal. So they will be making Expanse comic books for anyone that's a big super fan uh Daniel, i've read dagger and coin and so has jimmy oh so good it's quite good yeah yeah um dagger and the coin has been one of my like champion series like when people say like what's an underappreciated one it's almost always the one i talk about it's really good. yeah it's fantastic it's absolutely fantastic <laughs> yeah uh penny you, uh, penny and baron do get a lot of the credit from mccarthy there's been a few others but definitely the big driving forces and by the way for those who are wondering i know david sloan was in the chat wondering i did, i enjoyed all the pretty horses quite a bit probably in the middle of the pack for mccarthy books it was certainly better than orchard keeper um i dnf Or orchard keeper i know that's probably gonna get me uh some booze from the mccarthy crowd but i got i gotta be honest uh the orchard keeper i was like 70 or 80 percent of the way through and i was just like maybe some other time like i just i just put it down i couldn't do it Michael makes a good point, though, right here in the in the comments. OK, so you need to replace Bobby B with a picture of Alan and occasionally rages out. I feel like that'd be amazing. I feel like you could sue me. No, no, no. I'll give you my voice and you just put it in in the, the mouth of the picture. But all. Of the, yeah. Oh, my God. That would actually be kind of funny. Wow. What if I just got a big a big head of Alan just like behind me? jade city was the best book i read all year really jimmy are you kidding me jimmy are you kidding me or hillary tell you to say that i'm so sick and tired of philip <laughs> was that a good album I'm, I'm not tired of philip i'm tired of joanna reading everything with philip <laughs> oh Seriously. yeah oh, no, hold on hold on how long like how long did how long did you have to ask Joanna before she read Blood Meridian? Once, one time. Oh, I've been telling Joanna to read Joanna, I'm sorry. I gotta for answer this three honestly. years. For three years, Jimmy. Listen, I I literally said, Joanna, I think you should read Blood Meridian. And she said it it's it'll be here tomorrow. And she started. <laughs> People don't understand how they hurt my feelings. Like they don't. Like I sit here, I I am like a little troll who collects <laughs> wrongs done to me and in the form of little little pebbles. And I put them in a chest back here and I go and look at them to see who has wronged me the worst, the most, and the most recently. And that is how I decide how I'm gonna interact with anybody on any given day. Is I have to check, I have to check my little my little horde of of uh grievances joanna so, definitely is the one that i think 
commits the most fouls against you. Like if I'm being, I like Joanna, but like, I feel like she's the one that does you do. It makes me so happy that you are literally like, you're literally casting like level eight spell shift blame like, on <laughs> Joanna right now. I'm she's tanking. She's tanking. <laughs> she's, right tank, now. she's tanking the Allen rage. Listen, <laughs> I found out today that Joanna's thrown hands before. I didn't know this, but she used to, she used to th throw some hands and uh, beat up her cousins and whatnot. I mean, this is some crazy stuff. She's not, as innocent as she she claims to be, I think she's actually pretty violent. So you got to right, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Um, like where your honor, your honor, if I could make a, if I could rebut, okay. um, long price quartet is a total of thirteen hundred pages. How many pages of McCarthy have you read so far? With with Joanna, yeah, uh, probably like eight hundred. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe um, are you are you about more. to read another one? How long is that book? It's like 450 pages. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. How long was it? How long was the other thing that you guys read together? Oh, Wait, sorry. What? Which one? I'd have to go look. Let me, let me, yeah, let me look at my. I think my Joanna has been reading something with me for about six months. I freaking know it. I know. And we're doing. I, the we're only doing... time she'll read anything with me is if it's like 200 pages or if it's John, like John Williams, I guess. <laughs> Uh, Michael Mitchell, thank you so much for a 20 spot. That is very, very kind of you. Very generous. Uh, it says this chat is hilarious. Cheers. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Jay. Wait, where, where's Jay? What Sorry, I... Rogue. Uh, oh, I'm still trying to find it. I, I'm missing Rogue. it. It's right under the, it's right oh, under my the bad. Box. Yeah. So my omnibus long price Cortez is under 800 pages. Yeah. I think mine is around that too. I know. No, I know. Hey, but I'm going to. I'm going to read long price court debt this year. So here's the, I'm here, here's the problem. Here's the problem is people need me around to point out their inconsistencies and like microaggressions against me because no <laughs> one will see it. If I do not point it out to them, like people just ignore it. The so I, I have to, I have to point these things out. This is why uh, this is why no one watches my channel because I'm because I'm a, I'm a I'm a small petty little troll who collects grievances like 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 coins. <laughs> um, I also did want to. Why is it called Blade of Dream, Jamie? Why? Yeah, it's not a great name to be honest. I'd why is it not Blade of Dreams? Daniel Klauser also said majorly underrated. Not sure what I uh, missed that you guys had read it. I have a uh, book one review for Dagger's Path. The reason why I didn't do any more is because I felt very much the same about the rest of them. Like yeah. it was pretty consistent, which isn't a bad thing. Fits are great. Uh, I think I liked what book, what book, Alan, is it that we like the most three? It's the end of three. I, right? I like three. Uh, we'll have to talk about it. I'm going to type in the private chat what I didn't like about things going forward. I always have to make sure that I'm typing the private chat and not my comments and just spoiling crap. Yeah, I, I would I would like to reread it at some point, too, because I read that pretty early on in my channel, and I feel like I would like it even more now, to be honest with you. And also, Joanna does bring up a good counterpoint. Uh, and this is also kind of credit. You know who told her to read that? Her parents. So I already have a counter. I've already got a counter argument. Fair. But sh your Shogun read along seems to be going over quite well. People are really enjoying it and talking about it. And you, you, you know, when you're not invited to other people's stuff, Look. you create your own. Look, all I do is complain about things when I have it fine. Like I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have two actually two two successful read alongs going along fine. So I don't know what I'm complaining about. I'm complaining that I'm not part of everything is really what I'm complaining about. Really, really, I'm complaining that Joanna has a red long price quartet when I've been asking for three years to read it. And it's so good. That's really <laughs> it is pretty edgy. It is pretty edgy, Lord. That's yeah, hey, that, this is my villain turn. It says Say eight uh, miles. Eight. People don't understand how they hurt me is the edge lordiest thing Alan has ever said. <laughs> oh, you said Hayden Lyle. I thought you said eight mile. I thought we we're gonna bust out with the music, the moment. We, we will not be freestyle rap battling. You on sure. This show. We will not. <laughs> maybe a couple cocktails in, maybe down in Orlando in a Hawaiian shirt, maybe, maybe then, but not now. Joanna, stop entering evidence into stop entering defensive evidence, Joanna. Just accept your fate. Um, and yeah, you, you did host the big Augustus read along too, which was a pretty big success. I feel like the only time that you've ever had that strike was obviously like stately, but other than that, you've had a lot of successful read alongs on your channel. And that's you because Jimmy, I am, that's because I'm a delight. Are you, but I'm the Friday night delight. You can't take that from me. There's no, I would never, I would never, I would never deign to call myself the Friday night delight. What are you trying to say? I'm, 
no, I'm just a delight in general. I'm like, I'm like Gatorade for your mind. I'm filled with electrolytes <laughs> and like replenishing sodium and things like that. And I'm blue flavor. Well, I just want you to know that now someone is is uh, required to say, did you know Gatorade actually doesn't rehydrate you? You should just drink water. Just waiting. I'm just waiting for someone to. <laughs> I had some kid trying to make me drink something called Prime or something like that. I'm like, why am I going to drink that? Like, it's Gatorade. I'm like, I don't really like Gatorade. Oh, it's Gatorade, but it like, re- it like it's it's without all the, like what, electrolytes? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't <laughs> want that. That's a, I'm not going to drink some random thing a child thrust into my face. I uh, I think the Prime, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think that's Logan Paul's drink, if I'm not mistaken. So It is. They told me that afterwards. And then I said, I'm definitely not drinking that now. Yeah, I got uh, mad because the UFC signed a deal with them. And so instead of having the blue and red corners for fighters, it's now the Prime Hydration Zones, which is the lamest thing of all time. What do they call the Prime Hydration Zones now? The corners. So you have the fighter in the blue corner, the fighter in the red corner. So now it's now the fighter standing in the, in the strawberry prime hydration. Like it's so cringe. You know what? I wish Logan Paul would be deplatformed. Like I really <laughs> wish someone, I really wish the world would collectively wake up, realize that guy is trash, like as a human and just like, would it not be the funniest thing if everyone simultaneously unsubscribed to him? Like, like, <laughs> like he went to bed tonight. Being like, oh, Logan Paul. Oh, 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 oh. And then he woke up the next day and he looked at his channel and he had zero subscribers. No, he has one and it's his mom. No, not even his mom. Wouldn't that not be like, that would be the best. I'm writing it down. That's just, I'm writing that. I'm ri- that's that's what my, my novel's about. What if- the next, the great, next great American novel. And it's going to be starring, starring Pogan Lowell. And one day Pogan Law wakes up and everyone, no, the Paul brothers themselves, like they are, they are one douchebag unit and (laughs) all of them. So what if we did that to you? What if you've put this idea out in the ether and and what 9,000 people just unsubbed to me? You just wake up and you got one. Guess what? Do you know how much time I would have in my life? And (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I would have no pressure to read anything. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm actually kidding. Cause I, re- I actually really enjoy this. Um, but if they, you know what I have, you know what I'd be able to do? I would just, I'll just talk to people in discord. I wouldn't have to make any videos cause I have no subs. <laughs> <laughs> your sprints have been going well over on your channel. I think that you have kind of, uh, made doing sprints hip. So here I do like really, I do like sprinting, but this is a problem I've always had with in, in my life in that, people really like to listen to me complain about stuff. Like they like to hear me rant about stuff, which is normally fine. But when I start having like bad mental health days, Mm -hmm. like, like I can't always rant. Like sometimes I don't want to, sometimes it's not, sometimes I can't help it. Sometimes I just got worked up a lot of times. Like a lot of times I can summon them from the ether. If someone brings something up worth ranting about. Um, But, but you know, most of them are whatever, but like, you know, people really like me ranting about stuff, but it's just like, guys, I don't always want to rant about things. And also, are you saying that you do not like you, you if you, you do not enjoy me when I am not ranting, in which case that is hurtful. That is hurtful. No, I think people love when you get excited about something. The problem is the problem is, is unless I'm feeling mentally health, like poorly, poorly, poor mentally, I am just excitable in general. Yes. And so if we end up talking about something I don't like, I'm excited about that the same way I would be excitable about something I do like. Like, for example, I said I wasn't gonna bring this on the stream, but I am. Like I um so I went into PL's uh Steve Talk Books' chat, uh, and PL was in there, <laughs> and so was Jenny Wirtz and um and Taylor and um Christian, Christian Cameron, Cameron, who's if you don't know, if you follow him on Twitter, his 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 Twitter handle is is uh, Focion or, or Focion if it's Greek, and I love that guy. Like he was elected general forty five times, and like was an opponent of Demosthenes, who talked a lot, and he didn't Focion didn't talk very much. So anyway, so I went in there and I'm like, PL, I got to leave because of the spoiler chat, but I support you, and I haven't read book one, so I got to go. And then I I said I also love 
the 45-time elected Stratagos Phocion, who was the slasher of Demosthenes' speeches, smiley face. And they highlighted that comment. And Christian Cameron did not get excited. He not just, even a bit. Like, not, like nothing. And I was just like, what? Like, if someone was in the comments and said some, like, freaking obscure reference about some general that is always overshadowed by Alex Alexander the Great in that time period, I would be like, dang, yes, Phocion! Phocion is awesome! That's what I would do. And I was like... That's exactly what you do. I was like, what? You're not... Ex oh, not yeah, Miles Cameron slash Christian Cameron did not put you over at all. <laughs> what, what did you call it? What did you call he, it? He no-sold you. I got no-sold. He took your finisher... <laughs> And he said, I'm kicking out at one, Bubba. It ain't going to work for me. I don't do the job. I got job. no sold. Oh, he got well. no sold by Christian Cameron. So I did get no he's sold. on the holy war list. No, no, no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to holy war him for, for that. It wasn't, you know, it could be because it's not his channel. Like not everybody is, is not everybody commits faux pas on the reg by having no sense of decorum and would interrupt mm -hmm. someone else talking by going, dang, Poseon. I would. But, you know, <clears throat> well, I can understand being excited about, you He's know, excited certain, about everything. Yeah. Certain references. It is. It is deflating whenever someone just doesn't put it over and they're like, yes, they, so know, they it. no sell it. They no sell it. And then you look like a goof in front of 10,000 people. And look, you're like, well, I love my wife who has COVID and I normally don't like getting stuffed crust pizza. But I was like, honey, you want me to get stuffed crust? She's like, yes. So I got stuffed crust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, you were talking about being excitable about things that you don't like. Um, and recently in my patron discord, um, a couple of us unknowingly kind of accidentally buddy read a new self pub release. And that was the 11th cycle, which is supposed to be that dark soul berserk inspired. For sure. And um, I ended up DNFing it. And some, uh, I think most people in my discord were not favorable for it. Um, but the point of this is, is not to, you know, say that, but it's to say that there were things that people disliked about the book. And because of that strong dislike, it actually ended up generating a bunch of discord. There was some, there was some, you know, obviously some flames, but mm -hmm. it, it was actually interesting. It led to almost like a two to three day span of really good conversation around how do we rate self pub, which me and you have talked about before we've talked about grading on a curve. We've talked about, like, how do you approach this? And um, I don't know, a lot of the really thought provoking stuff. So I do think that even if it is a rant per se or a negative thing, I think it can lead to something productive and it is exciting to talk about at times. So I agree. Uh -huh. um, first of all, thank you, Oso, who said they would use their wish to, if they had a genie, they would use their wish to one of them wish to get rid of all of the Paul brothers subs. So I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but um, wait, reading rainbow says reading East of Eden right now. It's about a YouTube influencer that turns professional fighter and is generally loudish. <laughs> One day he wakes up to have zero subscriber. It's really thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Who knew John Steinbeck was so ahead of his time. A visionary, if you will. Uh, I mean, he really, he really was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyway, sorry, I'm reading the comments because I was talking about ranting. Yeah, Pe um, Patrick did post an interview with the author of 11th Cycle today. So if, you, if anyone's a fan oh, of that book. So yeah, the discussion around... Um, so the discussion around um, uh, cutting them, cutting self-published author slack. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so it doesn't have, the, it doesn't have the, the publishing house machinery behind it. And anything that, that like, I am, a, I am a fan of the underdog. Like, obviously, I am a yeah, revolutionary yeah. at heart. Until the underdog gets too big for his, their britches, in which case I staunchly oppose them and wish to grind them beneath my boot heel. Um, and that's really <laughs> how it is. Like, I support the underdog until the underdog becomes, like, I don't know, doesn't, isn't the underdog anymore. And now mm -hmm. I must crush them because they have gotten too big for their britches. Um, but, so, yeah. If you don't have the self-publishing, like, like, you know, Goliath behind you, you are at a disadvantage. You are. Like, even if, like, let's say Ceteris Paribus, all the other things being equal. Let's say that, let's say that, 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 um, who's, who's someone popular? Um, Me. You haven't written a book. Um, who's a popular, beside, yeah, sorry. A popular someone who's written a book that isn't Brandon Sanderson. Jay Kristoff. No, you got to pick someone else. Because you gotta pick someone else. Sarah J. Mass. 
Okay. Go down to the next tier of popularity. It can't oh. be someone who's e- instantly recognizable. All right, Daniel Abraham. There you go, Daniel Abraham. Well, now we're on the other hand. Whatever, random author. Random author who is popular in traditional publish. Let's say they, at the same time, they release a self-published novel that is of the same quality, but they do not put their name on it. They put someone else's name on it. They put, you know, I don't know. I don't know, Keith, Keith Keitherson on it. Okay. Like, the Daniel Abraham book's going to do better. It just is like that. Like the trad pub one is going to do better. It has it has machinery behind it. Even if the even if the quality is the same, because you don't have any, you don't have any eyes on it. You just don't have. I, I wasn't because they're not pop. They're not popular enough. Like for the really, I just need I need John Gwynn, who is like like really popular, but not like Brandon Sanderson popular. Okay. Um, so I should have said John Gwynn. Um, but you would be able to tell because the self-published would also be about Vikings. So like you would, <laughs> um, I love John. Gwynn. Um, so yeah, so, so I do, I do, you know, they have already, there are already so many disadvantages that they have in not being traditional published that I don't need to be another one that comes out and says, you know, no one should read this book. It's trash. And I hate them for writing it in fact if i had if i had oso's genie i would no longer wish for the the paul brothers to have no subs i would go back in time and wish that this person never wrote a book ever i would never do that right now i'm not saying that anybody goes out and i was gonna say i don't i think that might i don't think that really happens but what what i'm saying is no hold on no hold on before everybody freaking tars and feathers me i'm not saying to be dishonest i'm not saying to be dishonest that's not what i'm saying if a book is, if a book does not feel like it has been edited, and because this is the thing that bothers me the most, is if there are like spelling errors, grammatical errors, like clunky, like really like unwieldy sentences, like ev- like even Trad Pub has that to like sometimes, but when it's really pro- like pr- prevalent in the in the novel, it means that it did not pass through enough hands it was not and that makes me feel like it was rushed or it wasn't passed through capable enough hands because there is no reason that a novel can go that should should that should go to market that hasn't been at like there there's no way editors can't catch that many errors like editors can miss stuff i get that but if it's everywhere and so so i haven't read i haven't read any self-pub like that but that is like so even though I cut it a little, uh, cut self pub a little bit of slack and don't grade it on the, I grade it on a curve, like like you like you said, grade it on a curve. Mm-hmm. People can trust what I say because I'm not going to tell you I liked it if I didn't. Because what I don't want you to do is pick up the book on my say so and then be like, what? None of the things you said about this are true. Like, look at all these like errors. This is not. Like this is badly, like badly written and has all of this kind of inconsistencies and continuity errors and all that, because then no one's going to trust what I say anymore. So I'm going to tell you my opinion on it. And if it's not for me, um, I read a book, um, The Darkness That Dwells, which is a sci-fi self-pub that it, it, like, it wasn't my favorite thing. I really liked the ideas in it, but there was some stuff with the writing that I just, that I just didn't vibe with me. And I said that, and I will you know, say it again. I don't read a ton of self pub, but the problem is, is when people, if, if people go out there and they say they, and, and if everyone gives everything five stars and I know that I give a lot of stuff, five stars, <laughs> like I, I get that, but that's, I didn't last year. Like I know people think I give stuff five stars all the time. Last year I didn't, I had like a, like a week five star uh, year, but I've, I haven't read anything this year that I haven't five star. That wasn't a that was a novel like the short stories uh, and I have and novellas I have given less than five stars. Yeah, um, but that's because I've really enjoyed everything I've picked up. Like you know, I am more prone to five star ratings than other people. But I'm not gonna. I do not. I am not gonna say something is the best or something is my favorite, and then have it be like not finished or not like. You know, you know what I mean? Like not of, I don't know. And I think that, I think that if people are doing that and then there's a novel that isn't, I think they're doing self, the self-published, like 
like community a disservice because then people aren't going to trust what people say about self-published novels. You know, mm -hmm. people already don't trust what people say about trad published novels because, you know, oh, they're in the pocket of big Sanderson coming to their house and, you know, <laughs> threatening their kids or whatever the thing is. Big Sanderson. Does, I mean, does that make sense? Yes. No, I think it makes sense. I think I think where it gets a little iffy is like I don't know how much you can excuse from it. I've read some great self pub books. I think Purple Prince right. is fantastic. Um, I think Kings of Paradise, while not a perfect book, and I have my gripes with it, is still an interesting book, like worth is reading. It, is that self published? It is self published, yes. And you know, there's spelling mistakes here and there, but like overall, I mean, I thought I thought the plot of it was tight. Um, there wasn't anything glaring. Um, Seasons of Albedon is another one that I really liked a ton. Cool. Um, you know, and these are books that possibly if handed to me, I, I may not have realized that they were self-published, right? So I think it's almost even less about, I shouldn't say it's less about being self-published because it is a different thing. But uh, there are times where like the best of self-pub, I, I don't know is a difference, right? I do think sort of Kaigen is also a good example, but sort of Kaigen has such a wacky third act that's sort out of, of nowhere. Kigen, sort of Kaigen should have been, she tried to connect it to her other stories yes, yes. And, and then and then she dropped that series. Yes. Like she should have decided to drop that series before. Sort of Kaigen would be the pinnacle of self-published fiction if that had ended at the chapter, chapter 27 known as the duel. And if they had removed chapter four, like if all references to that other world had been removed, like it would be so good. But I but 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 it's still well written. I just can't like. So I well, still that's what I'm saying. Title. Like she didn't have a bunch of spelling mistakes, but there is a developmental editing th process that probably they probably would have told her to drop that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like the, yeah. the out of the left field thing where it's just like, I'll be honest though, that is a for me. I didn't mind as much because I know it's self published, and I'm like, oh, like that's just that person going for it. So I kind of respect it. I in hate a way. it. Yeah, I mean, it most people do. Most so, people think it was so part. stupid. It was so <laughs> dumb. It's For like, sure. Oh, awesome samurai story. Third season of Arrow on the CW this week. <laughs> like, like, I don't care. Like, what is this? Oh, look, the Flash is in this all of a sudden. So <laughs> dumb. It's so dumb. It's so stupid, Jimmy. Sometimes I like wacky stuff, right? But that's an example, probably like something that wouldn't you can have. What you need to know, it can't come out of nowhere. Like it can't come out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, it did, so it came yeah, out literally out of nowhere. <laughs> Freaking Felicity Smoke was back there on her, <laughs> like typing on the computer. <laughs> Smoke spelled S M O A K because you can't just spell a word the way it's supposed to be spelled. It's a fantasy novel or a TV show. <laughs> my point being is that the best self pub though can can certainly and even i would just say good self pub you know uh be a really worthy experience and and really not see much of a difference between that and a, a trad pub and i do think that's uh, the, oh, the truth here. here she never angela hates me and all of booktube in general and me specifically she's never here <laughs> Well, she is tonight. That's because she's come to make fun of the fact that I can't walk. I th getting back to the self pub thing is Sorry. like, no, it's fine. Uh, I think that we're talking about grading on a curve. We're trying about giving maybe some leeway, but like that leeway is clearly extended differently from different people. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Like, I agree. And that like, makes it we all really hard for something that people seem to inherently be kind of. Um, timid to try and to start so i do think that it is a disservice just to you know four or five star every single thing that that happens to be self-pub and you could say it's about traditionally published too but i think self-pub more so because there I is agree. some sort of stigma around it and you know when i give out those four or fives for a seasons of albedon or a purple prince um or a sort of kaigen i want it to mean something you know well my issue is that Four, like you can four and five star. You like the plot. You like the characters. Whatever. We should we should not be four and five starring books that have blatant and flagrant and profligate grammatical spelling and syntax errors. Like that is when that is when it's not excusable. Like you can you cannot grade like, like spelling and 
and and, and grammar on, and or mis errors. You cannot grade errors on a curve. You can't. You have to come down on it because it's not acceptable. Like it's not acceptable. It's it's exactly like someone said the future, and you highlighted it. The future of self of self of, of books. Period. Uh, the future of ebooks is patching it in. Like it's like not acceptable. Have. It is not acceptable when freaking uh, CD Projekt Red, who and is a perfect example for this because CD Projekt Red could do no wrong in my eyes, Jimmy. Having played Witcher two and three, CD CD Projekt Red had so much goodwill going into the release <clears throat> of freaking uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, and they squandered every bit of it because guess what? Y not even you can release something that isn't working. You cannot release something that does not have the base quality. You can't do it. It is a it is it is a slap in the face to the people paying for your product, and like it and, and it, it 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 reeks of hubris. It reeks of hubris, Jimmy. And that is that. And in CD Projekt Red's defense, their investors were like all up on them but they were the ones that hubristically took on way too much way more than they could actually deliver big claims of time big claims for sure yeah. yeah so so like you you are required to produce a working product and so that is where and i'm getting worked up because i haven't actually read any self-pub that have that have committed this error but i know they exist you've got you've got you've got to get rid of the spelling and and grammar errors like you've got to like that is basic. That's just basic, like copy edit stuff. Like, th and that stuff doesn't even cost as much as the developmental ed editing or the story editing. The copy editor is the cheapest. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wouldn't accept a paper from my students that had that, or I hmm. would. I would give them a zero. I would not five star their paper. I think Shad brings up a really good point, though, that like some of this could be missed on your experience if you're doing audiobook. And I do think that this is fair Not because a lot of spelling for sure. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And who knows? I, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but have you ever been doing immersive reading and then like immersion reading and see that like the narrator actually switches to the proper grammar? I've actually yes, seen that happen a couple times. So Jimmy, um, I teach public school. I can only buy a book one time. All right. There's so... a thing. There's a thing called Libby that allows me to rent books from the library digitally. And that's how I do most of my audio. Does Libby cost you money? No, it's free. It's you a library, library card. card. The library card. It's literally saved me hundreds. I don't thousands have a library card, Jimmy. You, dude, you can get them online now. You don't even have to go in. I'm blowing your mind right now. I don't use libraries. <laughs> <laughs> libraries are for libraries are for homeless people. This is why we can't have Barnes and Noble on every street anymore. <laughs> no, I think no. So someone told me that, like, like when I first started BookTube, and I think I tried to get a library card online. Um, and I, I think I ran into some like difficulty with it. And so I didn't, I couldn't yeah. get one or something. I will say Libby is a godsend. Like it has saved me. It never occurred to me to do that. That would be, why don't, so you, you, you buy the, the audio book and you check out the physical or either or sometimes, honestly, a lot of the time with the patron picks, um, cause they're books I'm not sure I'm going to like, right. So they're random. So I'll just see if they have the ebook from my library. And if they do, I will just rent it from the library and it sends it directly to my Kindle. Or if they have an audiobook, I can do both and I can do immersive reading. Like I've done that plenty of times with things. Um, the Shadows Linger audiobook I got from Libby, which the was audiobook, it good? I've it never listened to an audio It was uh, very Black good. Company audiobook. I don't know who the narrator was, but he had like this raspy voice. I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if other people, narrators are weird. Some people hate certain narrators. Like Michael Cr uh, Kramer, it has to be the most like debated narrator i've ever heard like people either love or hate him i thought he was the one everybody liked because he did Sanders. who knew he gets a lot of pushback i think for me i i got burnt out on him not so much that i don't like him at least that's what i tell myself um, he's the sanderson guy though right sanderson he did um dandelion dynasty he also did wheel of time and he also is doing the lycanius trilogy that i've been listening to on and off so that's too many he does a lot, and I think, and and he does have a voice that could put you to sleep, in my opinion. I but I don't hate him though. Like a lot of people, like think I don't want to be put to sleep when I'm reading. Me either. Okay. Me either. He just has a a way of talking that just kind of makes me sleepy. I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I guess what we're saying is, is that anyway, I got worked up. I'm I'm not actually targeting anything because I again, like I haven't read self book self pub books like that. Um, but I mean, I do think I do think we have. Like we, Jimmy, you and I have a responsibility to the people watching us to tell people the truth. We can grade on a curve. Like 
when I grade my students tests on a curve, like it's not, I'm not telling them, a, telling them a lie. Like it is still indicative of their abilities. Like their paper still has every mark on it. That was there when I, you know, before it got curved five points or whatever, you know what I mean? Like they still can see every mistake they have. Like, so, you know, like, our, like our job is to say, Hey, so this isn't like, this isn't as polished as it should be, or this isn't polished at all. Or like, this feels like, like a paladin was trying to play wow and just face rolled all over his keyboard yeah. and, you know, then sent it to print. Um, and then it's people producing stuff that people are going to pay money for. Like, I mean, if you're giving it away for free, if you're giving, if you're giving the thing away for free, you're not going to charge anybody for it. Who cares? Like it can be dog <laughs> crap. It can be, it can be butt cheeks, but like, if you're going to make people pay for it, like, you know. Yeah. I think, I think you do take on a responsibility when people are going to spend money, um, on certain things. So for 11 cycle, I was able to get that from Kendall unlimited for free. So mm -hmm. it's like no big deal after I DNF it. Um, but if I had spent the 34, I think, of, I think what it costs like 34 or whatever, you know, for the paperback, I probably would have been a little bit more upset if I'm being completely honest. So mm -hmm. uh, I do think you're, you're kind of entering into an agreement that you're going to take that responsibility serious. And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that they didn't. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm clearly not saying that, but uh, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Where, you know, errors and spelling mistakes and stuff can really add up and, and hurt. And also like there's plenty of self-published authors that work hard, hard on their things. I get a little suspect when I see, cause I follow a lot of authors on Twitter. Um, I'll see, you know, that they finished their first draft and then the books on the shelf, like three weeks later, that's madness like released. And I'm just like, I, mm, did you just do a Grammarly plugin and call it a day? Like I, you know what I mean? Like that, that's Grammarly's tough for worst. me. Grammarly, yeah. Grammarly. I would say it's the worst, but I have terrible grammar. So I don't fucking comment on much of that. Uh, but yeah, that, that concerns me, right? Like I know there's a ton of authors who take time and time and time and time again are very meticulous about uh, the copy editing process or developmental editing process. And they, they don't, um, say good enough and then to ship it. And I, and unfortunately I think that can happen. And I think that happens sometimes in traditionally published. Uh, do you want to make, do you want to make the whole chat mad? Is that what we're about to do? Do you want them? Do you want them to lynch us? What for what? For where we're going with this. I, I mean, like, I, I have no problem talking about it, but like, you're going to make everybody mad. I ha Well, I hope I didn't make anybody mad. And no, no, I'm not... you're about to make everybody mad. Why? Because you and I, are firm believers in you like taking time with something and making it the best you can. And that if you, so let's say, let's say uh, one person writes one book and it takes them a year because, you know, they edit and they edit and they edit and they edit and edit. And then another person releases seven books in an equal time frame. <laughs> even if those seven books are good, which we're not saying they're not, but even if they are, do you think those books are as good as they could be if more time was spent on them? No. You yeah. don't think that? Cool, because we're both about to lose like a thousand subs each. Yeah. People get out of shape about this one. Uh, I, I, yeah, they do. I, that, and that's just say, hey, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before in the past, but I do believe the more time you spend with something, the better it is. Um, generally yeah. now different people do different things and have different processes i'm not saying that people can't just be more productive uh than other people but i do believe that more time almost always needs no yeah yeah and, and again we're not saying the final quality is not as good like okay so here so here's the thing jimmy i've been teaching for 10 years right i've been teaching for 10 years and um i can i can write a lesson plan pretty quickly and i can write and i can write notes pretty quickly for whatever i'm doing um and i can write a test really fast because I hate writing tests, Jimmy. I hate them. So 90% of my tests are written like the hour before school starts when I get to school. That's 90% of them. Some of, the, some of them I'm writing while the kids in my current class, you know, are working on something like they should be. Um, every now and then it happens. It doesn't happen enough. I, m every time one of those fast written tests are done, I'm always like, son of a gun, I should have asked that. Like, I should have asked this. Or there's, I have a mistake in there. Like, and a kid has to point it out. What makes me mad is when I've given the test four classes in a day, and it's not till the end of the day that someone says, uh, Ms. Walker, uh, there's like three answer choices that are the same on this one. I'm like, this test passed through 75 of y'all and not one of y'all said anything? Well, these grades are going to be good. 
Um, but when on the rare occasion that I take time to write a test, that's a good test. Like that's a good test. And I'm not saying my other tests aren't good because they are. Um, cause I've done it for forever. You know, I've got, I've got like a streamlined process in my brain. Um, but when I spend more time on it, it's, it's better. I mean, it, it always is. It always is now. Well, do you feel that way about your reviews? You can never say always that I, that the reviews that I spend more time on are better than the ones that I just spit. Meaning like the yes. ones that you prepare or the yes. ones. Okay. I was making sure. Then the, ones people... that, then the ones that I try to remember everything as opposed to having written anything. Yes. You like that black company review? That was, was that great. was planned. That was that was planned a great out and stuff like that. Yeah, you said that was um, your first review too, huh? It was one. It was one of my first. My first was Gardens of the Moon, but I think that was my second one. Yeah, I actually think it's one of your best reviews. I loved I it. it. I thought it was really good. Um. So yeah, again, again, I'm just saying that I'm just saying like everyone's in a rush. Everyone's in a rush. Um. Evie, Evie has why is it always about poop? Evie, Evie, Evie has, says, let me read this. So she says, to reiterate my previous point, you can't polish a turd. No matter whether you're crapping out a book a month or a book a year, uh, better quality does not necessarily mean efficiency or lack thereof. Um, well, this comes down to also like some people say that, you know, the writing craft, is it is it a craft at all? Or is it only natural talent? I, I listened to a really interesting panel on this at ICFA last year in Orlando. And... It did. Act, I mean, there were published authors that also felt this way. Like there were there were people that said, you know, if some people just don't have the talent and no matter how hard they work, they can't do something. I have always found that that is probably less likely to be true because I know I've not had much. To, the only thing I've ever had a natural talent on is fake fighting and getting my butt kicked in front of people in underwear. Like that's the only thing I've naturally ever been good at, which is a shame because it would a worthless talent to have. Um, but I've worked really hard at other things that I was very terrible at and had no natural ability at. And I was able to be serviceable. I would even say that my day job, you know, I'm not the greatest coder in the world, but I was able to grind my way up. Um, so I would say I was a turd that got polished personally. Yeah. I, my natural abilities are um, complaining about things and shouting at people until they do the things that they should be doing. Um, because I don't know why people just can't, know that on their own uh but we were teenagers and in college and we don't know anything at that point so like if literally if i say what do you want to do we will sit around for two and a half hours and then we'll do nothing so they need me to be like all right this is what we're doing guys and they're just like eh, okay like <laughs> like that's fine um I like but what go ahead I say I, I kind of like this counterpoint because people are disagreeing with us, and I, I think that's fine. They say pulp fiction writers from the early 20th century had to pump out stories weekly, monthly in order to not starve. And the really good ones could still write great stories. Taking too long can be bad. I, I actually like this point. I will say this. But there's a difference. Shorter between, works. That's I was about to say. There's yeah. a difference between releasing, you know, a thousand page tome to doing some pulp fiction that's being published, whether it be in a magazine or whatever it might be. But I do think this is this is a good point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. And and Kristen is saying also that you can <coughs> you can polish you can tweak something too much. This is this is the curse of every writer um, is just going back and editing and editing and editing and editing. And anybody who wants to you know it was a new author that wants to or a new writer that wants to be a published author you go back and you edit forever. Um, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So that that's not worth saying. That's not worth saying. But like you know, I mean I don't know. I mean I don't know. I don't know. It's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Jennifer's points also, if the author puts out seven books and they sell millions of copies to get rave reviews, are the books as good as they need to be? And then, so now we get back to my, me and Michael's discussion about is the measure, like, is the measure of quality popularity? Um, in which case, if it is, then yeah, then yeah. But I mean, as we've, we've been talking about, we, we see things that aren't good that get rave reviews. Well, aren't good for us, I guess. You know, <laughs> you know, what is it? It's like de gustandibus. Um, I forget the Latin, but it's there's no accounting for taste in Latin, which means that uh, you know people like people like dumb crap. Yeah, and um, Hayden says also feel with big artists, authors, painters, actors, etc. Have to create sellable product while also being creatively fulfilling to themselves. For sure. For, for sure. sure. Yeah. For sure. And and I mean, and, and to be fair, in, in the defense of someone pumping stuff out, um, if there aren't like those glaring flaws that we were talking about, then, you know, maybe it's good enough. 
maybe it's good enough, but you know, could it have been better? I don't know. We're we're all we're all we're we're being uh waterfers, which are the what if people. Yeah, and we're not doing the thing. That's also yeah, exactly. Like that's that's what I always say when someone publishes uh, uh like a novel and I didn't love it, and or even if someone you know it's like <laughs> like Powder Mage. I yeah, you hate Powder Mage. I don't. I don't. I no, I don't. I don't like Powder Mage, but I don't hate it because I keep reading it. Um, like I haven't written a book. I haven't sold millions of copies, so who the crap am I? Like, I don't know anything. I don't have a master's degree or a PhD in fantasy and English. So, you know. Yeah, I think it's also good to, you know, always be humble enough to to accept the fact that, like, you know, you don't know everything and you don't know all the specifics and stuff. So I always leave that leeway for myself, yeah. which is why I said, you know, this is what I believe. I'm sure other people might not. Um, but I don't know. At some point, Jimmy, like... People are, people are thinking of us. People are going to start thinking of us too much as people instead of like um, celebrities, like they used to, because we're revealing way too many like real people stuff, like about us, like as humans. Um, and I really don't want them to do that. Like I, I like when they cast, you know, cast jewels and oaken crowns at my feet when I walk by. You know what I mean? <laughs> You would like to be worshipped is what you're saying. I mean, I've gotten, I've gotten, I've got accustomed to a certain lifestyle <laughs> and that is adulation and, and a tribute. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is all trash. Um, no, I'm just saying we end up talking about a lot of like, you know, real life stuff. Yeah, we certainly do. And then somehow try to relate it back to like Black Company or something like that. Black Company's so good. Like I was so moved. <laughs> I was so moved in those later books. Um, like I am not a huge fan of the books of the South. Um, there are some people who strenuously disagree with me, but I don't like Shadow Games and Dreams of Steel. And then I don't like Bleak Seasons because Bleak Seasons is very weird compared to where we've been before but i love the final three books she is the darkness water sleeps and soldiers live are so good oh my gosh and i remember all of the thing all of the feels that i felt when i read them and for a while my freaking like my bio in xbox 360 was soldiers live period and wonder, wonder why, why period like that was my bio in xbox live for forever back when i had an xbox um but uh, like I was just I was a huge black company fan, huge black company fan um, back in high school. Like we just read it like my buddy. It was me and my buddy, um, Franklin and Matt and uh, Matt that just gave my wife COVID. Um, we like we would read it and then we would, you know, talk about it. And then we waited, you know, a year and then we'd reread them um, because we were always waiting for soldiers live to come out, especially you know, with all the events that happen in water sleeps, we're like, when's this dang book going to come out? And then it finally did. We doing, we did a lot of that. We waited for, um, wizard and glass and then wolves of the Kala. We waited for, uh, feast for crows after, after storm of swords, man, I you got, to, you got to do a lot of really cool releases. I don't yeah. feel like there's that many. Numbers. I was literally about to say that. Like, it feels so different now. Like, I don't ever feel like I'm sitting here, like, anxiously. Like, I think I just read more widely. And we're spoiled for choice now. I think in the late 90s, we didn't have as many options as we do now, for sure. Yeah, not only that, but I don't know. There, th There's a lot of series going on, but none of them feel as epic as some of the older stuff. And I, I, I don't know. I don't like, want to be like, where it's a, like it's a release event. Yeah, I, I mean, I got to say, you know, uh, Stormlight Archive releases, I've only been around for the one that was like happening at the time, which was Rhythm of War. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie to you, dude. It was such a blast getting caught up in that. Like yeah. I had I ended up, you know, being kind of mixed on the book overall. But I can't I can't tell you how fun it was to read people's reactions and stuff. And I know for you at some point it gets exhaustive because for you, you know, you're like, I'm not reading this. Shut up. Can anyone talk about anything other than this? Uh, but I miss that. I missed that quite a bit. Jade Can Legacy was pretty hyped. Jade Legacy had a pretty big hype whenever it was getting released, but it still didn't feel. Yeah, a lot of that hype though was was from just big booktubers. It didn't feel it didn't feel 
like much of my problem with with Jade Jade Legacy is that a bunch of people that I knew at the like were reading it at the time and were saying extraordinarily superlative things about it, which doesn't mean that they didn't think that. I was just like, I don't want to hear it. Um, but like the Stormlight for sure. But like these were events. Like they, they it, there were multiple. I think now we're on kind of like a yearly cycle for books. Yeah. There were multiple years between the Black Company books and the Dark Tower books, and well, not not Lots. once you find not once he finally got Wolves of the Kala out. Then it was a year to Song of Susanna, which that's why I hate Song of Susanna because I waited a year for it, and then I had to wait another year for Dark Bleeding <laughs> Tower, freaking Song of Susanna. Uh, and then you know we waited. <laughs> How long did we wait from Storm of Swords to Feast for Crows? And, and were you caught up or was it I already it was, out? I think it was five years. Were you? Was it already? No, out I, I was. I. I had not read uh, it was 2007 when feast came out or 2005. I can't remember. Uh, no, I had not read it them at that point. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, so like, my buddy and I had read, we had read the first three, like, you know, three separate times waiting for this freaking fourth book to come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the yearly cycle is the thing. And I got to say, Oso was saying it was exciting when agent madness drop and I'm a, I'm a huge Abercrombie fan, but if I'm being frank, like, I don't know. I don't know. I was excited, but I knew I was getting it. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it's like he he writes the trilogy, he revises, and then he releases them one, two, three, um, which I was pumped for. And it was cool to see how it all ended. I will say uh, maybe part of that was I was very confident what was going to happen in book three as far as like endpoints go. And I got all of them right, I think. So Abercrombie's doesn't have that like kind of plot mystery going on with it. Like it's it's not too too tough to figure out i think stormlight certainly takes a lot of twists and turns and just has so much to it that it's very very difficult to kind of figure out where it's going to go uh which is fun so um if wins a winner does or ever comes out which i do believe it will i've been saying november 2024 for a long time and i think that's when it comes out but whatever uh if it ever comes out i think that would probably be like as big of a book i am not we'll ever i am not sure that i not, like even i whose last Gurm book was Dance with Dragons when it came out, like the month it came out. That is the last Gurm book I've read. Was it 2012? Yeah. So it's been 11 years. 11, maybe 2011, actually. I am not certain that I could resist. Like, I think if there was actually a firm release date, because, because Jimmy, like, you know me now, you don't understand how much we talked about freaking uh song of ice and fire back when i was in college back when like you know again before we were spoiled for choice when that like that's what we were like we made it an event to watch the first season of game of thrones and then mm -hmm. you know i watched the first and then part of the set part of the second season and i'm like eh, i wish there's another book out um and you know it's just life got in the way with that kind of stuff but prior to that like we we, we watched it like we talked about it all the time so i am not certain i would not want to be caught up in that discussion if Nothing that, would bring me more joy. Like, I, like I, I think I would have to. I don't know. Like, someone was saying it's. Someone was saying that they didn't think Gurm, like George, was a very good writer. And I was like, you know what? Because I, I was revising my top ten authors list that I haven't put out yet. I'm like, you know, I haven't read any Gurm since I'm on since I've been on BookTube, and I haven't read a Gurm book in eleven years. But I think he's still one of my favorite authors. Like. Like, it, it, are you trying to win no, brownie points with me? No, like, no, no, I'm being serious. There, okay, is no, okay. there is no way to describe what I felt when I hit the halfway point of Storm of Swords the first time, and the same way I said it, I said I built it up the same way for everybody else. I lost my Clash of Kings book because the girlfriend who dumped me in <laughs> like and had my car had my freaking Clash of Kings book, and I never got it back. Now that's because, criminal. I, because I had her read it. That's criminal. This was back in 2004. Man, I love those books. And like I, I like I just don't talk about them much because I don't think about them anymore, really, because I don't I don't read them. I don't have exposure to that anymore. There's not a new one on the horizon, so there's no reason I need to be caught up on the lore. You know what I mean? So I think if there was actually <laughs> I think if Ha, 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 ha.
when I saw that comment and didn't react to it because I thought it was I thought it was World of Warcraft, and then I realized what WoW stood for. Um, <laughs> Amanda, I thought we were friends. Um, but uh, like seriously, like if there was actually a firm release date, I'm I wonder if any of that would come back. I'm not saying I would, but I'm saying I think it would be I would be much. I don't know. I would be really hard pressed because the only thing I've seen like that has been the Stormlight book. Um, rhythm of war and mm -hmm. what we're building up to this next one yeah. and before that like the last and that was on booktube the, the last one i saw in in um real life was you know the harry potter events when the next harry potter was going to come out like every single person i knew was frothing at the mouth um, yeah those were those were like of th those were those were those were momentous and you know way bigger than the than the next song of ice and fire or yeah. dark tower black company drop but among my friends like we waited years and we spent, you know, again, we didn't have a bunch of other stuff. So we, and we also didn't have the internet wasn't everywhere. So, you know, we talked about these series with each other all the time. Like we had D and D characters that were just like, you know, ripoffs of the taken or, <laughs> you know, like just the plus something er. You know I mean? <laughs> the vacuumer. No, the vacuumer. <laughs> <laughs> the dirt devil. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, the my wife didn't know what a dirt devil was, and I've never felt so old in my life. Your and wife my wife's didn't... not that much younger than me, but like I was like, is this like a like wow? It's a, we call it a dustbuster here. Dustbuster, dirt no, devil. No, I mean, a, dirt devil's a brand of dustbuster. That's true. That is true. Um, Ronak actually has a good point. So speaking of big upcoming releases, don't understand why Last King of Osnar is flying so under the radar. Final book coming in November. I, I'm so I haven't started Last King of Osnar, but I love Tad Williams, clearly. Um, one of the problems, dude, is and I know you feel this way, I think, but I know a ton of uh, my viewers think this way is it's tough to say, hey, I'm going to read this book one and book two. When even if you do have to wait a year, it is tough because you read so much other stuff in the meantime, you kind of forget and you want to remember all these things like the Durfee book. The third one came out and he wrapped it up. I'm waiting for the audio book because I did the other two mostly on audio. So I want to like finish right, the, I want to finish the experience uh, like that. But it, it, it's tough. Like, for instance, Age of Ash is a book that I have wanted to read since it came out and I have drunk my feet. Same thing with Justice of Kings, because I'm like, well, I'll wait till it's all out so I can binge it. Or at least read it in close proximity. So I do think, and I don't know if that is now because we have so many options, so we read a lot more or what it might be, but I, there seems to be a little bit more hesitancy so, when it comes to these So things. Age of Ash, I completely support that. Because Age of Ash is a an intertwining narrative where we have covering the same events, but also events that we don't see, but we hear about, covering a same time period from three different characters. So what you're looking for in there is like the, Oh, I remember that from that last book. So that one, I absolutely, I'm going to, I'm absolutely going to have to reread age of ash before I read blade of dream, but for justice of Kings, it's not like that. Like they're much more self-contained and Richard Swan released a comprehensive synopsis of book one on his website where it's literally the entire book. You know, you can just go read it. <laughs> now justice of Kings. Is it, is it a solo POV or is it multi POV? It's one. It's, 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 it's Derville, uh, it, but a girl. Okay. It's uh it's it's, it's from nah, seriously, it's from it's his scribe's point of view, but she's old now. But she's old now, but she's she's writing uh, about her experience with Von Vault. Oh, I younger. like that. That's oh, what I'm I, saying. Like, I, I love, didn't know it was I a female that, POV. That yeah, it's a it, I'm neither did you a read lot it. of people. Need, <laughs> I am not one of the people who got really mad about that and posted bad reviews because of it. Like there were some people because you know <sighs> people are going to be dumb but it, it is not super clear it is not clear from the back that it is going to be um that it is going to be female pov and he did that on yeah. purpose so that people wouldn't like he did that on purpose so that people wouldn't get bent out of shape um but it's great she's great i love helena um or helena as he called her um but yeah it's single it's single pov female she's and she's a teenager too she's 19 so um a lot of people in the book were like well there's a that the romance is i'm like she's 19 like have you ever seen a teenager in a relationship <laughs> like they they are literally that stupid the, like, yeah there's a pre-teen teen uh relationship in in farseer 
and it's like infuriating to read about but i'm like man if that isn't just like kind of spot on <laughs> like it's, i know which doesn't mean you want to read about it to be fair to, to people who don't like it but it's like i gotta give them some points for accuracy because we were all insufferable the first time that we laid eyes on whoever we liked oh, I mean, oh my gosh every one of us have the 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 friend who or, or if we didn't have this friend we were this friend who all of a sudden once they got a girlfriend disappeared like they just disappeared guess we're not hanging out with them anymore like <laughs> they'll be back in six months <laughs> yeah exactly i feel okay so i gotta explain what just happened so i i i i uh, messaged christina i said hey could you bring could uh, could you give me some more pizza and she's like how many pieces and i said uh what do you think because i've been trying uh, like since since getting hit with a car i <laughs> haven't been taking my adderall anymore um and i and i'm less exhausted i think because I'm not crashing off of it anymore. And so I've been okay. I'm trying to make sure if I, cause I didn't want to take it while I was in the hospital. And when I got out, I'm just trying to, trying to get a new baseline to see if I need it. But the problem is, is like, I'm hungry and I don't yeah. want to get fat. Like I don't want to, like, I don't want to, to, to gain a bunch of weight because I'm hungry all the time now. And so I was asking, like, like I just, like, do you think I, like, what do you think? Should I need one, one more piece, two more pieces? But I had to send a message saying I'm not being sarcastic because Christina hates. She said to me, point blank, like two weeks ago, she's like, why are you sarcastic instead of being helpful? Because she'll ask, it's like, I'll say something, but I'll just say it. And I don't, because it's how I talk at work, like to, to the kids, where it's just like, where they're like, um, Ms. Walker, like, do we have a do we have a test today? And I'm like, if only there were someone around, like, if only there were someone at the front of this classroom who um, happened to tell people when things occur. And you know, if only we carried a supercomputer around in our pockets that with which we could take a note in case we forgot. And so I, I say stuff like that, less harsh, but I'll say stuff like that. And she hates it. She hates. She's like. Why didn't you just why didn't you just answer me? Like, why didn't you just say no, we don't have a test today or whatever? Like, why did why didn't you just say, like, hey, can we stop at this place on the way home? Like, why don't you just say that instead of being sarcastic? And I don't I don't mean to. I really it's called being a jerk, it. by the way. That, that, it's that, that, not that's... my wife is just not a sarcastic person, but everyone else I know is. Like, she's just not. Like, this is not who she is. So I feel <laughs> I feel so bad. So I realize that in text, I said, um, what do you think? Yeah, it sounds rude. Um, as shit. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, that's so rude. <laughs> Leave <No>. the box, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Oh, I got to tell you something, and I don't know why I'm doing this on here. I got this thing growing in the side of my face, and I'm like kind of concerned. Like, you see that? I mean, yeah, but I'm kind of like a nipple. I, I'm not a doctor. Ask Philip. I don't know. I got this growth in my cheek, and it's getting big. Jimmy, go see a doctor. I started noticing my videos. That's how I figured it out. I was like, man. Go see a doctor because they'll either tell you it's nothing or they'll biopsy and tell you it's you're going to die. But go get like go see a doctor. And I hope it's not the second one. It's getting bigger, though. Jimmy, stop. I don't. I am really squeamish about people. <laughs> well, like, now I'm ugly. I'm too ugly no, to look I at. Is this what this your, is? I don't. I don't Try I don't open up a little bit. Highlighting your weird cheek growth. Try, try to open up a little bit, and Alan can't handle it. Alan doesn't want to see my ugliness. I don't care if you're talking about it. I just want you to stop going. Stop, just stop it. It's my cheek nipple, bro. That's so weird. That is so this might be, weird. This might be the end of the line for me, man. <laughs> it's not the end of the line. This might be the beginning of the end. It's, it's not. It's not the... Uh... Do you... If so, would you like to take over my channel so you can finally say you have over 10? <laughs> have over 10, yeah. <laughs> what do you feel about getting lapped by people who are in their first year book tube? I mean... I mean, I'm getting lapped too. There are two me's. There are two me's. Okay. There is... There is... I'm, there is... I'm really petty and booktube is the most important thing in my life. And so my identity is wrapped up in booktube. So I hate them. Because it's like, you know, then it's it's just like, well, I've been doing it for this long. But there are people who have been doing it longer than me who, you know, have fewer subs than me. That's so true. Realistically, like the reasonable part of me is like, you know, good for them. You know, good for them. Um, and if, it, if it's just through natural like charisma or natural quality content or whatever, 
I mean, that's even better if it's through monitoring like uh, analytics and, you know, watching how to grow your channel and like following that kind of thing, like, you know, like the, the formula for success and, and that's working. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm less impressed by that, but I mean, still good for you. It's not something I'm going to do. Yeah. I do not look at my analytics channel. I hate it. I don't like it. First of all, it confuses me and it makes me feel bad. Uh, so I don't like looking at it. I, I only look at it to see the, the male, female breakdown of my audience. That's the only time I go to it. You try uh, not to get your female number too high, I would assume, right? No, my female number is was higher than my male for a while. It's not anymore, but it was for a while when that's I first started out. I think, someone I think, who someone dislikes women so much. I, I mean, that's probably why I lost them all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You should look at yours and tell me what your breakdown is, though. I'll look at it after. I'll let you know. I know oh, at yeah. one point it was very heavily female. I think I was like 60, 40 or 50, 50. Yeah, I was 60, 40 at one point. Now I'm like, now I'm, now I'm like 46 female and 54 male. But it was, hmm. it was like 60% female, 40% male. Hmm. So. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it just depends on what, you, what, what you're here for. But it, it is, I think that the audience for BookTube has grown so much that, yeah. True. You know, there, there's a there's a lot more to go around. And also, it's probably great for the viewers and people can chime in and chat. But I imagine it's it's really nice having so many options and people read all. I mean, a lot of people. read. I'm listening, stuff. but my wife, I've talked no, to her fine. real quick. You're fine. I'm talking to chat here. I'm talking to the real guest of the show. Um, but I feel for like, you know, y'all listening that it's probably awesome that you can like find someone who identifies with your niche. Like five years ago, that probably wasn't a thing. Like you probably couldn't turn on YouTube and find a uh, R. Scott Baker chat or a Tim Powers chat or whatever it might be. So I have to imagine that as far as uh, viewership goes, that it's probably the golden age for me. I kind of wish I wasn't missing out on it, but it's very, very um, sad because I don't have all the time to watch as much. Sorry. I was reading these comments. People, some people are telling me to go to the dentist. Uh, just to be clear, it's not anywhere near my teeth or anything. It's like up in my cheek like all the way up. Like it's not even really, I know it maybe it looks that way, but it's not connected at all. But maybe I'm still wrong. I'm probably still wrong. But Oh, hey, oh Alan, are you back? I am. Sorry. I was reading, I was seeing Anitha tell me I don't read enough female authors. Go watch my standalones video, Anitha. Like half, fully half of those, those books are female authors. I think I don't ever <laughs> count them. So. Jennifer said, I'm concerned that you noticed the bump through watching your videos versus looking in the mirror. I actually don't look in the mirror very often. Jimmy, like you it. know you spend 30 minutes every morning doing nope. one of these, like pulling a guest on. Nope. Nope. Too, too depressing. <laughs> too depressing because I remember what I used to look like. Oh, <laughs> I, can, I can see that. I got that. I, no. I get it. I uh, uh, work out like a madman in spite of myself because I dislike myself. I hate seeing how much more gray like has appeared in my hair and then especially down here since my accident like freaking old man now makes me so mad how old are you who me 32 i always forget what 32 oh 32 yeah jimmy i'm a young guy. 32 32 how what did you think i was I, I, mean, I, I knew you were in your 30s i thought it was 34 and then i i always forget because I have one friend who's 34, my, my, my buddy at, at school uh, who teaches next to me, he's 34. And so I always forget, like, I always swap you two. You're 32. He's 34. I'm 40. I'll be 41. I'm turning 41 in Rome. True story. My birthday is going to be while I'm in Italy, which is really cool. That is cool. Limbo, uh, if you look back I think at previous day, earlier. Yeah, it probably wasn't here in earlier. Was this? Will you continue Black Company series? Yes, I I just finished Shadows Linker and I thought it was excellent. I loved it. One of my favorite reads so far in early in twenty twenty three. What what's your favorite read so far? Me? Yeah, so far this year in twenty twenty three. Yeah, um, probably <laughs> oddly, uh, Imperium, uh, which is the first book in the Cicero trilogy, and it's short and it's a political thriller, and it is just. And I'm not saying it's the best book I've read. I don't I don't think it is. But it's my favorite because it is once again, it, it just aligns. Like I love politics in mm -hmm. my in my stuff. I love like really like powerful speeches. Like I don't like I will sit there and listen to a monologue any day if it's good. Like it's just hard to write a really compelling monologue. And, and you know, it's ancient Rome. And it's so I know that I know the stuff. It's like a dramatized version because I watch I've always tried to find something that I like on TV 
dealing with the Romans and the Greeks, and I just never find anything that I like. So finding it in a book, like I'm like, this is this is good. So it's probably my favorite um, so far. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I knew you were really excited to read that. And then is that the way you just did a live show the other day? Yeah, yesterday. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's quite good. Like so, yeah. I, so that's what I'm most excited to read. I just, again, Philip just sent me his book, so. I think I'm going to try to read like a little bit of it at a time. Cause the thing is reading Phyllis is going to take me a while. Cause I have to take notes because as a, um, as a, uh, and what I'm, what I'm doing, this is like, I always feel bad cause I don't ever do anything for my patrons. Um, uh, which, you know, I really try. I just can't like, I do, get, I, I do now get reviews up early. Like I get videos up early, but it's like the night before. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to record, I'm going to record the whole process of like, being a first time audiobook narrator. Oh, that's like a great idea. Behind the scenes stuff and everything. So I'm really excited to do that. But like reading the book is going to take a long time because I have to take a bunch of notes. Like I have to mark on what page the character first appears where we get like their, their description of like, you know, where, where their descriptions appear and stuff. And you make little notes, character notes so that you can refer to them. So, to, to, you know, it's basically time now to save time later. You know what I mean? Um, and then if I have any, thoughts of what I want to like what I want to do with them like I would take those notes there also because mm -hmm. y y like when I'm reading I'm like okay I'm going to try to remember this and if I don't well it's not a big deal but this is you know a job so like if I don't write it down and say that I'll remember I know and what what I don't mind if I forget and then forget that I ever knew but when I know I was like dang it when I read this part I was thinking something like what was I thinking when I read this part that drives me crazy so, yeah, I, I, I always have to take notes like that because of reviews. Like if I don't, I, I struggle. I really would like to get back to doing like spoiler free reviews and spoiler reviews. And I usually combine them, but I've even thought about maybe splitting them up a little bit. Uh, and for Philip's book, I feel like there is like this awkwardness that Philip's my friend. And I don't want people to think that I it, let's say I like it a lot. I feel like I owe a spoiler section to explain like specifics i don't i'm not saying i'll do this but i feel like that's probably the appropriate thing to do to be able to give all the receipts for everything i feel and if i don't like it i still kind of have to do it because i feel like i owe it to philip at least a bit or to explain to why everyone why i said hey philip's book wasn't that good right so i think that there's going to be a lot of justification for that so i uh I too will be taking notes, but I think that you showing the behind the scenes for your auto uh, audio journey is, is awesome. That's a great, I might well, even subscribe to your Patreon for that. And I'll give them, I'm also going to, that's where I'm going to drop the, the, uh, the, the, the B, the B side track of me being like, are you serious, Philip? Like who <laughs> talks this way? Where I'm just like ragging on a character. I can't obviously publish that. Sadly. Real original Philip. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it already. Uh, like, oh, here's the Gandalf or whatever. Oh, never saw this coming. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, have you read the Claudius novels by Robert Graves? I have not, but I'm planning. So we've been talking about some people in my Discord because we all read Augustus. And now we're reading the Cicero trilogy. Is We're talking about after that reading I, Claudius because it's next. And then because there's a Hadrian fictional autobiography after that also and we're just going to read all these fictional roman autobiographies mm -hmm. uh because i claudius has, has been known for a long time as like a just a like i don't know it, um paragon of, of historical fiction it's just been held up for uh, and celebrated for a long long time so I, I i've read like the beginning of it i read it when i was in high school um but i definitely want to um want to read that for sure yeah. um and talking about philip's book that's gonna be the hard it's gonna be the hardest review i've ever done is reading philip's book because because we're so close to philip and for this one because i'm the audiobook narrator right like it's just yeah, i don't just know a, if you can i don't like there's honestly just, i don't know I, if i really if i really like it i can it, if i really really like it i'm not gonna have any problems like you know what i mean it's just if i'm if i think it's mid like if I think it's fine, but it's just not for me, that's that's where it's gonna be. That's where it's gonna be a problem because I don't think it's gonna be bad. I think Philip knows the craft too well. I think I think Philip is too well spoken to write poorly. I I, I do. I, I like I think, and I also I also I also read the first two pages and it's not poorly written. So, um, 
So I'm not worried about that. And I'm not worried that Philip is going to have terrible grammar mistakes. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, but if it's not my thing, like, you know, I still want to help Philip out while also communicating to people like, so, you know, you should read this book. If you like these, these, this, 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 this thing, there's a bunch of traveling. There's like four hobbits and like, uh, and a dwarf and an elf and a shoddily dressed wizard. And they're traveling to some mountain to throw a ring in the, in it. And like, that's not my thing. Like, I don't love that the most, but I know a bunch of people like that. So y'all should definitely read this, you know, just, just like I normally do. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just, it's just weird. Cause we are closer to Philip and I've read, and I've read books for people that I know before, but you know, we've known Philip for a long time and, you know, we've met Philip in person and, you know, like if I, if I wrote a book and you like, you dragged it, I'd be like, are you kidding me, Jimmy? Like, like what? So rude, Jimmy. <laughs> well hey you gotta be I, I, i'm here for the people not you brother uh it, it is what it is I'm a, I'm a people's champ i can't i can't turn you are not a people i can't champ. turn code on my people i gotta be honest no I, I understand what you're saying i mean for you i'll be honest as an audiobook narrator i don't even know like that's weird that that is a weird one maybe yeah. a discussion is better warranted maybe yes no yeah. i need to like maybe i don't know what Jimmy, I'm so terrified to do this audiobook. I'm so afraid everybody's gonna hate it. And like they're gonna no. like, they're gonna drag me and be like, this sucks. Like Phillips, Phillips book did not deserve Listen, this trash. People are already lining you up for their next jobs. Drew says after you knock Phillips books out of the park, it's on the Wars and Light and Shadow, right, Alan? Hope the process is going well. Those are a bunch of books that don't have audiobooks. Hey, you know what? No series. That would be yeah. awesome, Drew. Especially if I really like them. I'm trying, I'm literally trying to read some of Janie Wirtz's books so that I can have a breadth of knowledge. Like I, I, I don't want to call, I, I would never like cold call anybody. And, you know, like I would like to be able to speak to people about things that they enjoy, especially if it's things that they produced, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I am, uh, but I mean, that would be freaking amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if KJ Parker ended up letting me, like if I got to narrate the folding knife, I don't know what I do. I might do it for free. I might just be like, can I narrate the folding nah, knife? Don't say that. You, you, no, you, I know. You, you make your money. I know. Get, get, like, your I get my bag. I got to get my bag, as the kids say. Got to get, get yours. Um, Michael, I have not read any Murakami. Why are you I... always reading weird crap, Jimmy? That's not even weird crap. That's pretty like Murakami. Weird. Yeah, it's pretty legendary. Like people like, love. You, have you not seen Bookborn's discussion on some book he wrote about in the woods or something on the shore? What is the one that Bookborn? Kafka on the shore. Is that it? Is that it? It's the one that it, no, it's it, maybe it's the one that Bookborn hates. Well, me and Bookborn usually have very different opinions on books, except for Joe Abercrombie. We we tend to uh, side with that. Oh, really? So that that's actually an indicator I'll probably like it. I think Leanna also. Norwegian hated it. Wood is the one. Oh, Norwegian Wood by him. Leanna both hate. Yeah, oh. her and Leanna both hate it. Interesting. I uh, I don't have that one. I have some egg one or something, and some other. Maybe it's Kafka on the shore or something like that. Oh, so. Drew. Then I will need to get an audio sample. The problem is I don't have one. Like I, having never done this, I don't have like I don't have a reel. Is the problem? So I need to acquire one, which I'm hoping I can do with Philip's book. Then there I you go. Janie Wartz wants an audio sample. Yeah. So once I once I record anything for Philip, I'll I'll send I'll pass one along. But I, right. I don't have one yet. Dang! The first book of swords by Fred Saberhagen. Okay. So I read these. I read. Wait, these wait, wait. Let me read this out loud. Sorry. <laughs> Jennifer says, Alan, my Patreon pick for Jimmy is first book of swords by Fred Saberhagen. Sick name. Didn't you say you've read it now? You I can... picked up the book of swords by Fred Saberhagen when I was a kid visiting. I was like a, like a preteen visiting my grandparents who had retired to Maine and their little town of Waldeboro had this tiny library. And I went looking for fantasy books and I found the freaking book of swords and it's got talking swords in it, Jimmy. There are not enough talking swords in fantasy. Like there aren't. And that is one of my favorite tropes, like sentient, sentient items. And you I don't know to... why. I don't know why. Like, I think it's a holdout from, it's a holdout from D and D days. Like some of my <laughs> sentient weapons are so fun when they're not annoying. I, I want to tell you, but I think it's kind I don't think it's, I don't know if it's a spoiler. But there what, is something the one in Sanderson. Oh, OK, you know. Oh, OK, right? OK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's been that's not a spoiler. Well, why don't you read that? 
I don't know. Because I was reading, <laughs> I was reading this porn. Because I was reading this porn. I mean, that's fair. I mean, I actually think that the sentient sword and Sanderson stuff is excellent. Like, I love it. Like there is like you know the you know the Tales games like Tales of Arise and Tales of whatever yeah. the first one Tales of Destiny every single one of them has what's called a swordian every single one of their swords talks to them and they are the most interesting characters in the whole freaking game and that's for the PlayStation One and I still remember them I love the swordians sorry who 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 said that because I'm getting really excited about the Saberhagen who said that I'm very that was Jennifer who you yelled Jennifer. at earlier and berated for liking the journey did i really yell <laughs> did you forget already no that was oh i'm sorry jennifer <laughs> i was uh, yelling at anderson or who was i yelling at uh Faye, so i will be reading that hopefully this year possibly i'm gonna read moby dick and then that probably yes moby dick is i love moby you dick. actually are the one of the people who got me super hyped on moby dick because I, like I made fun of it one night, like it was a punishment. You're like, no, it's actually like someone really good. in my Discord just finished Moby Dick and had the absolute best. Uh, he said that a lot of these old, like 17th or 18th, 17th, 18th century novels, like all of the, like all of these, like classical literary references that they put in there is basically the pop culture references of today that hmm. we have in shows and everything. And it's like, the reason that we find it ponderous now is because we don't get it. Like, like I bet audiences were guffawing all over the place. Like back, Ready Player One? And like yeah, like back years. in their day. But we're just like, what? Like, Somebody just died on the inside that I compared Moby Dick to Ready Player One. I just thought that was a, I thought that was a really good uh, comparison because uh, there's a lot of those asides in, um, uh, yeah. Interesting. I love. I hope. I hope you like Moby Dick. I like Moby Dick a lot. Um, Brothers Karamazov, like Dostoevsky. I really won't wish I liked Dostoevsky better than I do. It's just so. I'm just like get to the point. Come on, Dostoevsky. Like I get you're in prison. Like I I, I get it. You got nothing else to do. But it's, <laughs> you're killing me. Like you're killing me. Um, Russian literature is not my favorite. Just in general. Um, and so I read, I read Karamazov when I was in college. Um, and I, I, I like, I, like, I want to say I like it, but I'm not, I don't know if I can, I don't know. Well, you read Shogun a while ago and you're rereading it now. Like, how is your experience? Like, do you feel like you're appreciating it more now or not? Yes, because it is not written in the same way as like an 18, a 19th century russian novel well yeah i just meant you know revisiting oh, yeah. a class i am enjoying like i'm enjoying it greatly yeah i forgot how much i like it especially um like especially once you get like to page like 140 or whatever like when, when part two starts is really when it picks up yeah it's just it's really really good um and it's third person omniscient i'm realizing how much i love third person omniscient again yes i mean also dark tower is written in kind of third person omniscient it kind of hops yeah it is uh, he kind of messes with it a little bit but i love that I love Dark Tower. Like I like Dark Tower a lot. Uh, Johnny Come Lately says, "Do you like uh, Tolstoy at all, Alan?" I mean, I like parts of War and Peace, and I like parts of Anna Karenina, um, but I, I, I just don't love Russian literature. Um, Faisal wants to know if you could talk about what makes Moby Dick really good. Okay, so I, <laughs> what makes Moby Dick really good is the fact that I really like whaling. So. <laughs> Which I, I think everyone usually like, I like everything but the whaling. I've warned Jimmy. Okay, so Ahab and Moby Dick. The problem, the problem with Moby Dick is that people go in thinking that the entire book is Ahab versus the whale. And it's not. If you go in with that expectation, you're going to be sad when there is so there is comparatively little of that. I really like whaling. So I, you know, and I've warned Jimmy, I've, I warned him when he first yeah. said he wanted to read Moby Dick. I'm like, like, welcome to the best treatise on, you know, 18th century whaling that there is. So that's why, that's why I like it. Um, I completely understand why no one else does, but I also, I mean, I like the whale parts. I do love, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I liked sperm whales a lot when I was younger because they were the, the whales that had teeth and not the stupid baleen. Um, I was big into sharks and whales when I was like a kid. Um, and I always thought baleen whales were like beta whales, you know, and you got the sperm whale with the, 
with the teeth that could eat the giant squid and stuff. No, I love dolphins. I love dolphins. Uh, but I, and I love whales too, but I really like whaling. I don't, and I don't know. I, I don't know why. Alan supports whaling confirmed. I support whaling for the Japanese since they're not harvesting them for blubber and lamp oil. You know, they actually, they actually eat them. Um, you know, just like, I don't like hunting, but you know, my dad kills deer and eats it. I don't like people who kill it and then leave it there. Uh, that Though there. there is a crocodile named Gustav <laughs> who is the biggest crocodile in the world. And he is missing an eye because he's been shot and stabbed so many times, but he can't die. And he kills people for sport. He kills them and leaves them. He will pull fishermen out of their boats, drown them, and then leave them there. He doesn't eat them. He just leaves them. Like he feasts on nightmares. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> Usta, like I – and in the dark, I get, I'm a really scaredy cat in, in, in the dark. Like at, my, at the lake uh, when we go to my parents' lake house um, – it's a cabin really. And you know, lake house invokes other things. It's cabin. Like when we're hanging out in the lake, like there's nothing in the lake, but I do not let anybody talk about Gustav in that lake because I know that I know that like malignant crocodiles can't teleport through sheer evil in from Africa <laughs> to my lake. But right. just in case I don't, I don't want him to pay me any attention, Jimmy. Seriously, look up Gustav. It's terrifying. He's he has a body count of like three hundred, Jimmy. I mean, that's impressive. I just Google search Gustav. Did not get a crocodile. No, search Gustav <laughs> crocodile. It's a lot of Russian dudes. Uh, oh wow, that looks like a dinosaur. I know he has a body count of three hundred. He's killed so many people. Man, maybe remember Lake Placid? That movie. That, that movie. Is, that. that movie is dumb, but also scary. I love Gustav that. Movie. It's over nine hundred kilograms. It's over nine hundred kilograms. It's over nine thousand. Bro, he is legit. Jimmy, that's like eighteen hundred pounds. I mean, he's no, he's no joke, dude. Like he this terrorizes is... a village. Is it Burma? Is that where he is? Here, I'm going to share this. I mean, what an amazing creature, honestly. Can everyone see that? This like, thing is legit a monster. And he is missing an eye and has all kinds of like scars on him if you get him from the side. To be fair, I don't know if this is actually good stuff. This is just Google Images. So, <laughs> Hold on. I got to find a picture of Gustav. Um, oh, no. I got it's from Burundi. I got you. Hold on. Let me... Stop sharing and then let me pull this back up so everyone can see this. Uh, no one cares about this crocodile, probably, but I think no, everyone cares. Look at little, him, he's missing an eye. You're, you're not wrong. He is a he is. Oh my gosh! Oh, the first time I read about Gustav, bro, Tyrion could stand in his mouth <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, DK Moon. Oh, DK Moon says he talked to Gustav and said at least 10 of those kills were not him. That must be just an opportunistic serial killer um, using Gustav's fame to like cover his own murders. <laughs> well, y'all learned about it here. Y'all learned about it here, Gustav. Seriously, go go look. I didn't know about this. This is cool. Look him up. Like, oh, these are the things that keep me up at night sometimes. Jim. Honestly, good good on the animal kingdom for fighting back against Star Wars. <laughs> well, honestly, this murderer, this serial killer of the animal kingdom. Like, can we be honest? Like, more people should probably be eaten. Uh <laughs> <laughs> like throw the pauls to gustav like can we get gustav jake paul in a six round exhibition with 18 ounce gloves yes oh that would be the end done <laughs> the paul brothers done in in the strawberry hydration center oh <laughs> no it's gustav i'm slowly turning this into an mma podcast like it's slowly <laughs> going into it i'm gonna really i'm gonna gaslight everyone and kind of trap them here um, people, uh, if fantasy fanatic was asking this, so was Cy Kepler, but, uh, has anyone here read Jules Verne? I have not. Uh, I have, I read, and... um, uh, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Um, I love a lot of leagues. It is, it is. And I, it, and fun fact, the captain's name is Nemo, which in Latin means no one. Um, but so I like 20,000 leagues under the sea because of the squid and the squid is in like one part. <laughs> it's, 
it's not super interesting. Um, but <laughs> Journey to the Center of the Earth is. I like that. I, uh, I So I read, those are the two by Jules Verne I've read. Wait, did he write? George likes Jules Verne a lot, I think. Did he write Around the World in 80 Days, um, Jules that's Verne? Because that's my favorite if he did. Around the World in 80 Days. Of course, they show me the crappy Amazon crappy Prime movie. video. Yeah. Like, like, come on, guys. Stop it, as Alan would say. <laughs> I yeah. Do say stop yeah, Around the World in 80 Days. Uh, Jules Jules Verne, by Jules. That's my favorite Jules Verne book. I, I love might start calling him Julie's. I just feel like it's better. That's fine. I, I love uh, Phileas Fogg or Phineas Fogg in that. 1872. Oh. Almost as old as Philip. <laughs> Philip catching strays. <laughs> Never did like him. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Was never a big fan. Alan, we have been killing some souls bosses together too. We want to talk about it. is so fun, Jimmy. Oh, that's that, like, I love the souls games because of the sheer, like anxiety you get playing through them on your own. Like yeah. knowing that whatever's around the corner is going to kill you. Like, can I run? Like, cause the second you get impatient and you start, all right, I'm booking it. I'm not walking slow anymore. Yep. Something kills you. Like you just, it's like, it's I literally had slave night Gale beat. And then I panic rolled for no reason. I was just like one hit left. And I just was like, smash the roll button. And then he just stabs me through the center of my skull. And I'm like, I hate this game so much. But fighting fighting those hard bosses co-op is uh, one of my favorite things. That's one of the reasons that I haven't picked up Sekiro because you can't do that. And I'm like, man, dude, like, you, I don't want, I don't want to like reach a place I can't do it. You would like the aesthetic. I know. Oh, it's in the freaking Sengoku era. It's cool. But Jimmy, I don't like. I don't think I'm good enough to beat it. And when I can't summon help, well, that sucks. Well, ben Benjamin has been helping me since you don't have the uh, DLC unlocked. Yeah, and he's yellow dead. welcome for those 35 embers I dropped you. And he is, yeah, he, he, thank you, by the way. We're still trying to beat Madeir. Uh, yeah, he is excited for our uh, stories from our DS2 playthrough, which we'll be doing together. That would um, be awesome. And for those who aren't gamers or anything, the, the Dark Souls franchise, all the Souls games, just have some really absurdly weird fantasy backstories to them. And I wish... How about this? Is there any books that you read that you feel like kind of give you a Dark Souls vibe? Mine's Malazan. Like Rake would fit in Elden Ring. Right? Wouldn't you say? Alan is taking a, a quick smoke break here. I don't smoke anymore, Jimmy. The fact that you ever smoked at all is crazy to me. Like when you told me that, I was like, what? I smoke two packs a day. You were just drinking Coke heavies and ripping cigs. I drink, I drink eight, like six to eight cans of regular Coke, and Coke I smoke heavy. two packs of cigarettes a day. Dude, I haven't had a Coke heavy in like fifteen years. It'd probably kill me if I if I drank one now. And you rip cig. So, what, what was your cigarette of choice? Do you mind talking about this? Is this too much? It was Marlboro Lights until that nationwide cigarette tax went into play, or I guess maybe it was statewide. I don't. Yeah, there was a there was a nationwide movement to raise tax on cigarettes. Um. And then I switched to L and M lights because they were, I mean, because those were still five bucks a pack. I need you to understand, Jimmy. They were five dollars a pack. I smoked two of them a day. I spent three hundred and ten dollars on cigarettes every month. That's a lot every of money, month. Alan. Do you know what my rent was at that time? Five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Seriously. And so in twenty in twenty thirteen, so I smoked from two thousand to. Well, 2001 to 2013. Well, yeah, late 2000, early 2001 to 2013, January. And then I smoked an electronic cigarette, which is not the same as vaping. Um, vaping, people who vape hang out like... You vaped before it was cool. People who vape skulk in bathrooms or hang out at the at the e-cigarette shop, and they all they want to do is just get lost in their cloud machine. see daisy Alan, we might have some vapors here. All I mean, right. that's, I, that's, that's okay. I didn't make a value judgment. I just said, well, I did say skulk. You're right. I did say skulk. You did say skulk. Um, uh, but I uh, smoked an electronic cigarette as, as nicotine replacement therapy. So I, one, like, I don't care how bad they are for you. They're not as bad for you as cigarettes. They're not. And second, I went from spending $310 a month to spending about between 60 to $80 a month. Um, 
so I drastically reduced the cost as well. And then like a week after I met Christina, but before we were even dating, I stopped smoking my e-cigarette and it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Like I would do many, many other things before ever smoking, you know, getting addicted to nicotine again. It was really, really, really hard. Wow. So, but what was the, what was the original question? Uh, if there, I don't even know. Oh, 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 Malazan. Yeah. Um, I think, I think Malazan uh, gives Dark Souls vibes in that, um, a lot of the lore is in the background and you have to go hunting for it. Um, as opposed to presented very easily. Cause that's, that's really the big Dark Souls things. Like I don't understand anything that's going on. I have to watch Vati Vidya. Um, yeah, he's got it. Like I, I would never know what's happening in any of them. If not for him, uh, it's too hard. Um, so so yeah, Malazan, Book of the New Sun. That I, from what I've heard, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, that makes me even more excited to start Book of the New Sun this year. Um, for those again, those who aren't gamers, I would really uh, encourage you to go check out the Elden Ring lore. The Elden Ring lore, which George R. R. Martin did help with. I, I Alan, I don't know about you, but I don't care about spoilers in those games or anything. So like, oh, no, I was no, looking no. up stuff, and dude, it made the playthrough actually a little bit better because I would have never known what was going off. Oh, but like yeah. some of the stuff with Godfrey, I mean someone should write a book based on these. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I played through like freaking Vati didn't have any videos out when, when the game first came out, because obviously he hadn't made them yet. So I just played through and then I just picked them up as I finished. And I was like, yeah, I don't know what any of this is. Like I watched the, the, the lore things that he knew prior. That's mm -hmm. something like the main over, like he knew what the, what the plot was about, which yeah. was incredibly helpful. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what this is. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so um, so yeah, I mean they are there. I mean the lore is really really rich. Um, it's not like people say there isn't a story. I mean there is. It you just have to hunt for it. Um, because just like, I mean just in the where we were in the uh, in Ariandale, like up that up the up that ladder where's that where there's that canvas that has like the it's just the smear of white until you get the painter there. Oh. Um, and and the 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 light coming in. Uh, through that window there like it's just it's so good like those guys know what they're doing they know what they're doing um yeah. but it is hard for me to get it even and i read everything i still read everything but i still understand it i don't understand it and i don't have the time so vati vidya thank you for all you do yeah if you're just a fan of like really good stories and backstories and history for things it's a great channel to fall asleep to like i'll throw it on even if i've heard it a hundred times it's a very I... soothing voice yeah, it's fantastic. Um, and you are right, Arliss Bunny. You said apparently 11th Cycle is directly inspired. It absolutely was. The prologue, which is the only part I enjoyed of the book, uh, kind of set up a lot of very like demon souls type lore and some some souls like inspiration, which is I mean, I was hyped for this book, like very, very ex excited. I did everything I could to like it and I just didn't, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so I will anxiously await the next person to attempt a Dark Souls uh, type book and hope for a better um, time with it because I do think it's like a rich yeah you know it's very strange though you said hey why do you like strange things I mean that's one of the attractions I mean, to those types. Uh, Bloodborne's my favorite but that's because I have always been attached one because I'm a Lovecraft uh, I'm just a huge Lovecraft fan and two I just like the Victorian aesthetic I always have like I've always liked Victorian uh, aesthetic uh, even though I hate Dickens um, and so Bloodborne and Bloodborne is also my first one. Um, so sometimes you're attached, you know, sometimes the first thing you do is you're attached to it, whatever. But I just, I just, I really like Bloodborne. I also like Bloodborne because I'm better at it because it's faster. Um, and I can, I am not limited in how many potions I can carry around. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot more healing stuff for it. For yeah. Sure. And, and you can, you know, you can hit them and get, get some of the, the health back. Um, I still think it, like it's still harder than Dark Souls three to me. And we were talking about that yesterday. Um, because I was so bad at Bloodborne because I had never played a, a Souls game. So I remember how hard the first area of Bloodborne was. Like, just the first area. Not even Cleric Beast. Just the first... I'm just like, this game is so hard. It's one of the best first levels of any game oh, ever, though. so good. It's so good. It's so hard. And, you know, like, I died so often on bosses through that but i knew i knew what the deal was going into dark souls 3 and so i did i do think that dark souls 3 has harder ha, the hard bosses in dark souls 3 are harder than any they're absurd 
yeah. they're absurd. Um, but I think overall, I had an easier time with Dark Souls, um, Dark Souls Three, mostly. Well, mostly because of freaking Vort's hammer. Like Vort's little ice hammer was really good for a long time. So I like I wrecked with that. It's very good against Gale as well. He's frost. Was it nice? I just used it most of the time. Also, I am geese. Thank you for the two dollar super sticker. A really cool little hippo eating a one up, which is pretty awesome. I'm seeing it in the actual YouTube chat. Oh, I wish I Streamyard put it up on the screen because some of these stickers are ridiculously. I funny. don't know why it doesn't. Streamyard sucks. It's not great for how much I pay for it. It is certainly not yeah, worth it. Streamyard sucks, Wampus. Sucks, Wampus. <laughs> uh, Alan, have you played Sunless Sea? No. Mm. And I want to say I know what it is because I've definitely read a Kotaku article on it, but I could not place it if I tried. Jennifer has a question. Says, Do you guys know anything about the Warhammer game books? I'm starting to hear about uh, now that Henry Cavill is adapting it. So I know like of it, a little bit about it. I know people who played the tabletop game and uh, they were super into it. I The books are so hard to approach. I've but never I've been able to get into them either. But they're just harder to approach because there's so many different authors and places. And I know that there's recommendations out there, which leave them in the comments after the fact yeah. so I can go back. Because I will say this, there is some of the like some of the world building that people explain to me. It Seems is like really cool. out there. Yeah, like yeah. Malazan kind of like Malazan yeah. gets out there with it. I like that stuff. So yeah. I know I know Chiago's trying to break into the into the Warhammer. Like he's been following like trails of Warhammer lore, like down rabbit holes. And I'm like, Chiago, you all you did on that sprint was read lo Warhammer lore. <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty big fan. Like he read one of the series or something, right? And he's like, I'm in. Like I'm bought yeah. in. I loved it. That's cool. I like that a lot. Yeah, Warhammer is something that, I mean, when I have some more time, I mean, I got to get through. Yeah, I've never been able to get first. into it. It's always, it's always been the thing that's in the corner of the comic shop when I go in to buy my D&D stuff um, <laughs> back in the day when those were things that existed. It is very popular very popular yeah it's been around for a hot minute too yeah it has and they've had all t t different types of games i played some of the games like vermintide which is like essentially like left for dead but like with like you know warhammer stuff uh and not zombies it was a lot of fun i had a lot of fun with it nice nice little hack and slash game which i thought was really cool and i guess cavill's going to be doing this uh this yeah. adaptation it could be big uh, they, I am did him, they did him dirty man like <laughs> he has the worst agent in all hollywood i mean there's just no if I, like how do you how do you lose superman then you go to witcher and then they leave you for the witcher to get you to get superman and then you're no longer superman it's like henry cavill has to be the most misguided or mismanaged actor yeah. of of our generation by far like it's not even close and i know some people hate on him or like ah, eh, he's actually not that good but i don't know he seems like a good dude and He's a nerd, so I kind of root for him. If I'm being honest, I agree. I always i i root for most nerds. I think I find Will Wheaton insufferable. Who's, I who's Will Wheaton? Freaking Wesley Crusher. And so, like at the beginning of, um, he was a character on Star Trek: Next Generation. He was a kid. Uh, okay. And so now, when they play like Picard, they do the wrap up afterwards on CBS. And he's like, "Hey, nerds!" And it's like. Hey, that's Bookborns. That's Leslie's thing. Okay, Bookborns thing is, is, is hey, nerd, hey, yeah, nerds. Hey, nerds. What's, What's up? up? Yeah, he was on He was on the Big Bang Theory. Like, Will Wheaton, like, he was on a board game. Like, he had a board game YouTube. Like, he's on the board game YouTube for a while. And I'm like, Will Wheaton, like, you, you're the worst. Like, you got, as a child, you got to be on this. And, th and this is the only reason anybody gives a crap about your stupid board game opinion. Your board game opinion sucks, Will Wheaton. I hate Will Wheaton. <laughs> You've heard it here first. Christian Cameron, Will Wheaton, both enemies of Alan for the rest of the time. Christian Cameron's not an enemy of me. That is not true. Do not. You agree. said you hated him. I did not say. No, no. I said no, I did not. I said that um, I said that uh, I got no souls. <laughs> Who do you hate more? Will uh Will Wheaton? No, not Will Wheaton. Christian Cameron or Brian McQuellen? I don't hate either one of them. I don't hate either one of them. I've never spoken to either of them. Come on. I've never spoken to Will Wheaton either, though. I hate him. I hate his <laughs> dumb, punchable face. Well, Will we Wheaton. just lost a subscriber because Will Wheaton's actually a big fan of the show. No, he's not. Will Wheaton Huge doesn't fan. know you exist, Jim. He was Beck. actually the guest in two weeks, and you ruined it, so... <laughs> Thanks, if Alan. you had Will Wheaton on Thanks. this show, I'd be so. I, hold on, I think my wife is telling me she's going to sleep. Hold on. 
<laughs> we got some love for 40k. Oh, he's the main kid in Stand By Me. I love Will Wheaton then. I love Stand By Me. What a great, what an absolute banger of a movie. How does Alan not like Will Wheaton? Will Wheaton's awesome. Uh, Tito J. Davis says, Will Wheaton has blocked me on Tumblr because I roasted him for doing revisionist history about Mary Shelley. All right, I no longer like um if he doesn't if he if he's not riding with Tito, I'm out. Will Wheaton sucks. Yeah. I went from liking him Will while Wheaton. you were gone to hating him again. I heard. So I heard Will Wheaton sucks. <laughs> um so yeah, so being a nerd doesn't, but I do like Henry Campbell. Um I don't like Big Bang Theory at all. I mean I don't like Big Bang Theory. <laughs> well, well, There's something about like the performative nerd stuff that I'm gonna be honest, it, it rubs me the wrong way. Same way meatheads rub me the wrong hay way when it's performative. Like that okay. meathead, like hot take. Let me go ahead and give you a hot take. Okay. Um, this is gonna be an unpopular opinion because how beloved they are. Felicia. That's day. how I feel. That's how I feel about critical role. Uh, <sighs> is what you just said. I lost to them in the 2021 Stabby Awards for fantasy associated work, which how I got so, nominated next so did to them. I. So did I. We were we well, were, I mean we I was the real nominee. Let's be honest. Like, come on. Come on. Like, the douchiest uh, thing you've ever said to me. Come on. I mean, I got, had more subs than you at that point, and I still got more votes than you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, like, you can sit at the kids' table; it's fine. Wow. But me, me, and Critical Role had it out. I mean, it was a razor tight margin. I think they won wow. 99 percent to one. Wow. <laughs> no, we also got stopped by Robin Hobb. Yeah, which isn't fair because Robin Hobb writes right. blog posts that are better in some books. Uh, the, like... the problem is the problem is the stabbies. I, I appreciate what the stabbies are trying to do, but when you nominate like critical role and then some booktubers, like what you us. Doing, why <laughs> don't like... you just give it to critical role? It'd be like me just boxing a baby. Like they were like, put on the gloves. Like, Literally. and I was like, you're going to get it. Wah, wah, wah. It, no, it's it like, a... it's not fair. Who's the, who's the more popular wrestler? Is it Stone Cold Steve Austin or Jimmy The Newton. Rock or Jimmy? Like, yeah. listen, you go to like, West Newton, Pennsylvania, they'll tell you Jimmy Nuts, baby. They'll say <laughs> the reigning, defending <laughs> RWA heavyweight. Yeah, it's like if you're going to do something like that, like I think it's really, I think it's a really cool thing to do. You can't nominate juggernauts that have their own freaking million dollars. They literally dollar released the television show the week that we got nominated against yeah. them. And I was like, Hmm, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder like, who's gonna win. You, you can't do that. You also can't. You also can't include people like because Daniel Green had won it like a couple years in a row, and he like declined to be nominated. Um, but you can't put Daniel <laughs> I like Green that little... and then like you or me or like you can't put any of us against that. Like you have to pit people who are at least quasi on the same plane. I Philip, mean, we would like to can... apologize in advance for any shade we threw your way um, in I this broadcast. I don't we love about. you very much. I don't talk about. I don't say, I don't say anything. <laughs> You're right. I'm Quick. I'm just banking on Philip being old enough to not understand how the rewind button works. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like that movie Click? Yeah, I can. <laughs> I like Adam. Sandler. I guarantee you, Philip has never seen Click with Waterboy. Was a little edgy for me, but I let my kids watch it I every would now. Be surprised if. If Philip had seen any Adam Sandler movie, only when they're on TBS and censored, <laughs> then he doesn't have a TV. Jimmy he has the rabbit ears. I think they get TBS. <laughs> he doesn't have a television. He does. Oh yeah, that's right. He actually doesn't have a television because I was like, that's the most. Pro or maybe I was surprised he had a television. No, he doesn't have a television. How is he going to watch the future adaptation of Wave at Dawn when it's like Andrew's wizardly reads and like does it? he can't watch it like he doesn't have a tv yeah but i'm saying when we all adapt it like i'm gonna cast andrew in a role it's gonna be me you anitha like we, we're gonna do it we're gonna do the way of a don a dan and it's gonna be on spike tv they're gonna bring back spike tv be on spike it's TV. Like the fantasy show for males what's like his name is john john trainer or whatever gonna show up and tell us that our bar is failing and fix it oh i hope so i hope they say this book is failing and he throws it at your feed book rescue <laughs> book oh my god book rescue should be a book tube segment jimmy. but we said it on here so it's already gonna be done by the time we're off. jimmy jimmy we literally should do a, we should do book rescue we should find a well is it mean though because we have to find a book well, we'd have to be mean that's there's no way for it. but if we're gonna sell out for the views that's what you got to do brother like 
Well, we can do stuff that nobody cares for mean about, like Sanderson. Oh, they care. <laughs> well, let's do book rescue for Alloy of Mid. Oh. First off, this healing character gone. <laughs> We've we've completely we've completely redesigned the cover in 36 hours. And Who sauteed this plot? Because it's undercooked. <laughs> Who can we find that loves Sanderson that will cry when we reveal the new the like the new the new cover? We bring on Christian from Lost and Discovery. Yes, and he just he's like, guys, you could never have done like I, I can't believe how amazing it is. Except could Australia. you do a bad Aussie accent at least? Uh, that's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> Every time I think of Ozzy accent, excuse my language, I always think of fucking what, mate? <laughs> I don't know why. That's what I think. And I don't think that's even an Australian accent, but like you won't fight. Like I just that's what I think. Jimmy, we need to do book rescue. Book rescue. We need to do book the rescue. Way of the Dan book book rescue. No, we're not gonna start with Phillips book. No, let's start with Phillips. <laughs> why? I like it. I like it. Why would we start with Phillips book? Well, hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> low hanging oh arliss is warning us off of taking on sanderson i don't know all <laughs> thank you benjamin my resident aussie says eh, good enough <laughs> oh nice he's he's only giving me the benefit of the doubt because he he likes me that's all i like i like i like ben's last name crowhurst oh dude ben's a, ben's a chad dude ben's is a he? great guy oh yeah he's he's a chad for sure he's, is he a giga chad he's a giga chad there's nice no, i've never seen such giga chad energy did Philip just pop in to say he was here and then like banish? I think I honestly think we might have offended him, which if that's the case, so be it. But no, I'm just kidding, Philip. I... <laughs> if Philip was going to be offended by us, he would have happened long ago. I, I, I literally think we're gnats like flying. Listen, I own his web domain at this point. So he, <laughs> <laughs> there could be some real questionable things going up on old phillychase.com. All right. You don't want to. <laughs> Username not required. It? Can Password. I go to phillychase.com? Phillychase.com. <laughs> Username not required. Is it password a... not required? Hold on, Jimmy. Is it a GeoCities page? Is it geocities.com slash yes. phillychase? Geocities.com slash is there a guest book that I can sign? Rule 34 way of a Dan. That, that's what we're gonna <laughs> we, oh no. No, Jimmy. Is there a MIDI that plays when I go to that website? Oh, there's a there's a guest book. You got to sign the guest book. There's a guest book. Now. Is there a, like a, a hit counter, dude? Are we gonna get way of Edan NFTs? And I know it's Edan, but Edan sounds way cooler. That's how. That's how I think. That's how Philip is is paying us. We're being paid in NFTs. Yeah, he promised me um, Philly Chase tennis racket NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, we love you. <laughs> Are you always this silly when it's like, yeah, because no one else, like, I, <laughs> no one's listening anymore. It's just me and this is how me and Alan do on Voxer all day long. <laughs> I ignore my responsibilities. I want a, I want a Philly Chase tennis racket NFT. Way of Edoge. <laughs> <laughs> Derry's here. That's how you know oh, we went Jerry. late. The Australians oh. are waking up, like the New Zealanders. Sorry, Derry. Indeed. I apologize. Um, I have. I have um I was telling them Philip that I'm going to I'm almost done with the book I'm reading and so I'm probably going to start this tomorrow. Um it looks good though. Like do you know what doesn't look good in its arc formatting? Freaking KJ Parker's new short story collection. <laughs> like it's it's so bad. Like I literally Listen, couldn't read it. I'm going to have to wait till it comes out. Philip is going to outsell KJ Parker first week. I mean 100%. I'm not We're sure. We're talking 20,000 units out. I don't think I don't think KJ Parker has I don't think 20,000 people have read his books. 20, and he has years. like 50 of them. How does that work though? Like does KJ Parker's parents work at the publisher? Work at Orbit. <laughs> yeah. Cause like they're not making any money. I, I, Jimmy, I pay them to be fair. Yeah. But you're like one, one person. Uh, I have an inheritance. I actually blew it all to pay to Orbit to have them keep publishing KJ Parker books. Yes, Lord, I'm aware New Zealanders and Australians are not the same. I've made that mistake plenty of times. No, or my right. wonderful patron, Taylor, who talked to me for this whole time, and I thought that she was in Australia and she was in England. And I Dairy, said... Dairy corrected me on that. I, 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 I mean, she says that New Zealand is a different country. But let me tell you, Jimmy, when I play Risk, it's purple. So <laughs> <laughs> two extra armies. Uh, Philip, we're excited about your book, my friend. Uh, we, we, we talked you up a big, big amount and, uh, Alan is nervous, but ready 
to, to, to hammer home these audio books and I'm ready to do a review and a breakdown and everything else. I'm going to take extensive notes to defend my position, whether I like or dislike it. I think it's going to be a lot of good time. Oh, wait, Taylor is Australia. I got to I got to flip to backwards. Taylor is in Australia. I thought she was in England. I'm an idiot. Gotcha. Um, Evie, what do you mean? No, I'm still reading Father of Lies. When I finish this book, I'm going to read. I'll read another short story. That's what I'm doing. I read a short story every time I finish something. I'm just telling Evie that I'm not ditching her because I don't ditch people in buddy reads the way we did with Alex. I mean, I didn't really. So that that read along was supposed to happen for the Lear Carew series. And I just like I was like, I can't. I don't have time. And then it won the patron pick that month. Like literally the wolf won the month it started. I was like, nice. well, I guess I'm in. Um, but also like, listen, I don't feel any obligation to uh, Leanna read along whenever she trashed the Winter King. Let's just be honest. So Tito down at the bottom is saying that definitely, I think he's talking about Phillip's book down there at the bottom. Yeah. Did you like that? Uh, did you like how I hit the B button and juked around? Yeah, around. solid dodge. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tito says definitely the first time I've heard a book tuber mention a book they wrote, and I actually thought that I might have to read that. And yeah, I get it. I get it. We yeah, believe Phillip's in Philip. Books, Philip's book's gonna sell like crazy. Like, there's a lot of people that are gonna get it. Like Philip. Speaking of Philip, why do you not have a Goodreads? Um, because he doesn't do star ratings. <laughs> not why Philip doesn't have a Goodreads. Why is Philip's book not on Goodreads? Oh so yeah. That- we can give it star rating. Well, he, he, he has to be added by a librarian. I think Patrick is. Actually, I think Kev. Patrick Kev, isn't anymore. He said it. I think Kev Jenkins here in chat might be a librarian on Goodreads who can like add series. I might be wrong. And if I'm wrong, Kev, If I'm you sorry. are, can you add Philip's book? Um, what's Goodreads is what Philip just said. Oh, my God. Well, you're, you're done. You're doomed. It's over. <laughs> it's over. We tried. We did. Where, where we are you going to read people's reviews, Philip? Yeah, uh, Philip, you should get a. Uh, uh, I'm assuming you haven't done this already. Kevin could help you out getting your book up there, but it, it, I think it's important to get that up there prior because with a lot of people putting one to read, it actually pushes it throughout people's accounts, and you could get some people that aren't just in our little bubble. And I think that would probably be a great idea. Yeah, especially after especially after he gets the cover and is able to throw it up there too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's not on the reach currently. I know I looked before. I'm excited for these cover reveals, my friend. I'm excited. I like how this is turning into us, like encouraging Philip after just, you know. <laughs> do we secretly feel bad for? Do we secretly feel bad for dunking on him? For well, I mean, I'm like, hey man, it's all fair game. It's all fair game <laughs> out here in the book tube sphere. Oh, never mind. I was about to get reworked up, and then I'm like, you know, why like, don't we, you? We've already because we've already moved past it. Move past what? <laughs> Move past the fact that you're reading you're reading Greenbone with freaking Philip. Oh yeah, Philip, you did miss that. Alan was very upset with me that I'm reading Greenbone <laughs> with you. I mean, Philip, you can watch the replay. It's just the same old general stuff. Twenty K Philip, you play tennis, you're old. You know, it's the same old, same old stuff. You're gonna be an author, so now you're on author tube. You're not gonna talk do, to us do anymore. Wanna, do you wanna only read stuff with you and Jimmy? Alan was distraught when I revealed <laughs> on air that okay. I was reading Jade. I, 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 I do not. I don't react th- to things well in general. This is why I should never be surprised. <laughs> it's like, Alan, we're going to the store. What? <laughs> I Seriously, Jimmy, like I got to be I need to know in advance about things because I do not have the ability to react in an appropriate manner. Um, so I, I I adapt really quickly. Um, to new situations in life, but I do not handle the reveal of the new situations well. Um, I tend to curse the heavens and shake my fist <laughs> at the sky. Um, I am not sitting in the dark, Derry. I just wanted to try different lighting. Uh, I thought that this like kind of looked more distinct. If people could give me feedback in the chat and the comments after of how this looked. Kev mentioned it earlier. I meant to bring it up, but Alan was you know, ranting, so I didn't want to break it up to talk about my setup, which I always talk about and people make fun of me for, but uh, yeah, I just want to try some different lighting. They make fun of you you for what? I always talk about my set because no one cares. Like I talk about books and I'm like, does my camera look HD is my sound sound. And people are like, like, dude, this isn't 
This isn't the Y files. This yeah, it, it 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 flips me out. Like it freaks me out too. Like anytime I change a piece of equipment or anything, I'm just like, is this gonna like affect the quality? And they would they wouldn't care. They don't yeah, care. as long as the audio isn't offensively horrible, no one no one gives a shit. No one cares. Um, Many Face Dylan, great question. Says Jimmy, what's your favorite album if it was written as a book? Would who would write it? This is a really random album to say is my favorite, but. I would say my favorite album is Welcome Highway Interstate Managers by the Fountains of Wayne, which everyone knows them for Stacy's mom. But that's not that's not uh, what they should know them for. They actually made a lot of good music. And unfortunately, the lead singer died during uh, 2020, which was really unfortunate. I think he might have died of COVID and he wasn't that old, which was really sad. Um, but yeah, I love that, that CD welcome, uh, highway interstate managers, I think is what it was called. And it was by fountains of Wayne. And if I could have someone write it, it would be John Williams because for true, th they're kind of the same thing. Like it's very simplistic, but for some reason it just like vibes and, uh, which Alan, I know you hate the word vibes. Uh, no, I just don't understand when someone described there's all, no plot, all vibes for a book. Like, what does that mean? Well, I think we're gonna have some vibes when we get done with Jade City and and Angela wants to know, Alan, are you going to read Jade War with Jimmy and Philip when they get to it? Angela is literally trying to reignite the powder of a musket that's already gone off. Like, put your powder horn away. <laughs> oh, that's right. Angela didn't love um didn't love Jade War. Kristen, thank you. She said, Jimmy, I like your setup. The mood lighting is nice and your sound is very professional sounding. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, one of my favorite things to do is when I give, listen back to my Bend the Knee podcast with my buddy Matt is how good we sound. It's like buttery smooth. It's terrific. That's awesome. Yeah. We're doing some cool things. If you're in a Song of Ice and Fire fan, you should really check out uh, Bend the Knee. We're having a lot of fun over there. And uh, we're in A Storm of Swords right along right at the beginning of the book. And we do a chapter a week or every two weeks, depending. And uh, we just did uh, Tyrion 1, which is where he has the conversation with his dad, where he's like, I want Casterly Rock. And he's like, you'll never have Casterly Rock. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> like Tyrion and Tywin interacting on page is peak fiction. Like that's it. That's all. It's everything I've ever wanted. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Ooh, wow. look at this. Philip Chase says the lighting is groovy. That's <laughs> From the to 70s. Throw my rollerblades and throw out a disco ball and get, <laughs> get groovy. What are you reading, Jimmy? Now, what are you reading right now? Um, mainly just watching my analytics go up. But other than that, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just being a douche. Uh, I am reading. Shit, what am I reading? White I just Rose? I just wrapped up a bunch of books, so it's, it's White Rose. Of, no, not White Rose. Um, especially after you told me it wasn't as good, you like demotivated me to read anything. Yeah, sorry. The thing is. The thing is, it is really good. It's just like you're following Shadows Linger. Yeah, it's tough. And it may be a break between the two isn't a bad idea. I'm reading The Prox Transmissions by the Star Set Society, which is written by a band. Uh, um, one of my patrons, Amanda, uh, this is the patron pick of the month, and it's like a sci-fi where a guy gets like a message through SETI in a satellite. And What's it called? It's called the Prox Transmissions. It's That's a, right. I, I watch I watch your TBR. It's a super it. obscure sci-fi. I'm only like maybe 20% through. I really like it so far. The writing isn't the greatest, but it's certainly not bad. Um, but I really do you like whenever a protagonist has like a block of memory missing, like they were asleep for a month or they have amnesia or sure, something. Sure. Sure. Um, I mean, I don't like full amnesia. That's stupid. Uh, Cause it's usually, it's usually crap. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like pieces of memory missing. That's fine. Yes, yeah, so he he kind of comes to, he comes awake and he's in a, ba a public bathroom and the guy's like opening the door like I gotta get in there I gotta use the bathroom and he comes out he's like what did I get drunk like what happened he figures out he's been asleep for a month and he oh doesn't know gosh. why and then like these coordinates in the satellite are in a lockbox and this is all within like the first 10 to 15 pages so it's not really spoilers but really enjoying that and then I'm reading The Light of All That Falls which is the Lycanius trilogy book number three I'm doing that very slowly on audio and it is pretty mid pretty mid so i didn't realize i had two copies of this but they are both the ugliest cover ever oh they're hideous hideous it's so i, I kind of i kind of like it it's kind of like i don't know it's kind of so bad that it's good you know oh, they're hideous jimmy i mean apparently so am i you couldn't even look at my cheek earlier without... oh my gosh jimmy that is not what happened that is not what happened it was a snooze fest, says Ruth and Bad. Ruth and Bad's a legend. 
Like, look at how bad this is. <laughs> Draw. Dreams like, of Steel. They don't get good. They don't get good until bleak seasons. Like, so now, now, I mean, it's kind of generic, but at least it's not hideous. <laughs> um, also, just so you know, uh, we do have someone that disagrees and says White Rose is the best of the first three. So that gives me more hope. I mean, but the, the problem is, is you just read Shadows Linger. Like, it's it's not is the problem. Like, it's not better than Shadows Linger. Like, you can like it. Like, I, I will entertain arguments that it's better than the first one. Um, I mean, I don't agree, but I mean, I, I can see that. It's not better than Shadows Linger. Like, Shadows Linger is so good. Y you know why? Friggin' Marin Shed's not in it. So, <laughs> guys, Philip's book is a fit. It's not going to focus because there's no autofocus. Uh, the Wave of Dawn. Uh, I literally I just she's... clicked it and I didn't find it. What the crap? It's oh, on I... there and I hit one to read. It is now being pushed in your in the algorithm. Philip Chase will take over what the world. The that is fantastic. So yeah, those are the two things I'm reading. And then I'm going to try to knock off one of the authors I haven't read before. It'll probably be Octavia Butler or Philip K. Dick first because I have long plane rides next week. Um, I got to do that. And then March is tough because Philip's book comes out, I think in March, right? I cannot so I, find it on Goodreads, Jimmy. Where are you finding this? You might have been banned. Uh, Shadow banned. Uh, just check. Take a look at your feed. It was like the first thing that came up on my thing. Too many notifications, man. My phone is blown up. My God. Um, but Octavia Butler will probably be something I try. But March is rough because I got I got Philip's book coming out, which I really want to read. I was going to do Shadow March March and finish Shadow March. But I also have to read Jade City now because I'm doing a buddy read. with. I, did I tell you about this? I had a buddy read. <laughs> did I, I didn't say yeah that. yeah you mentioned it you mentioned oh it did i earlier. in passing yeah yeah, okay. yeah. It, oh, okay. it wasn't a big deal it was almost like a throwaway line okay okay yeah so i'm doing that just so you oh, know thanks, i'm doing God. that with philip chase author of wave of dawn uh how many Bookborn, subs do you have he has more than you uh and then and bookborn also has more subs than you, so i'll be doing that and then taylor uh, made between the pages an up-and-comer uh growing fast exponentially uh, the growth rate is insane. So I'll be doing a read along with those people. You're not in that read along, right? No, no. I'm oh, OK. OK. <laughs> such a douchebag. What if I acted like that all the time? <laughs> oh, my. You'd be insufferable. I already am. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't Fantastic. think it's insufferable, Jimmy. So what are you reading? You're reading some Paul Kearney right now, right? Yeah. And I actually I actually do think that you would like this because it's. You know, like the weird, sexy stuff doesn't bother you, which it's not, there's not even any of it in the second book. There's one like part where it is briefly, but it's like it's it's not it doesn't feel extraneous. It's like, OK, this needs this. Ha this is something that's related to the plot. So there's none of the other weird ones on the other one. Um, so all that's gone. But, yeah, I think you would like it. It's very um, it's I mean, it's not Malazan, um, and it's probably and it's definitely not uh, Prince of Nothing, but. Yeah, I think you'd like it. I think it's good. I think the I think world building's cool. I think it's interesting. I think it's, you know, gritty enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you'd like it. Yeah, um, me and I'm, Kev are going to read that later this year. Oh, very cool. I'm very, very cool. excited about it. Um, yeah, I, I'm enjoying the first the first two for real. Like I've like I've read it really quickly. Like this, the second one's better than the first one, um, because everyone is where they need to be instead of like traveling to where they need to be. <laughs> so right. uh, it's 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 quite good. And even though I feel like there hasn't been a ton of um, like a ton of uh, like there's one there's one storyline that went a long way the other ones just keep uh, continue to build but rather than making it really long it's just a 300 something page book and then yeah. i'll read the, i'll read the next one but so yeah it's been it's been a, it's been a good read after that um i gotta read the next cicero book um i gotta read the next cicero book in shogun that's what i'm that's what i have to read this month um but i'm like i said i'm definitely gonna start reading philip's book but read it slowly because i have to take notes um, but I have to fight the urge to want to read it like fast so that I can be the first one to review it. You know? <laughs> I mean, there's a, I mean, there's always a, 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 um, um, a desire to be like, you know, to be the, the, the trailblazer or whatever. I've never um, felt that. I'm not going to lie to you. Really? I mean, that's, 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 that's like with books. Yeah. I've never felt that. That's good. Um, I don't think like, I mean, I, you know, I don't feel it a ton, but I mean, oh, did you play WoW? Uh, yeah, but like way past the heyday, but yes. 
Oh, like, do you don't remember the thrill of trying to go for a server a world first? first. Actually, world Fighting first. Cowboy got a world first on Elden Ring in his Let's Play. He found the hidden it, dragon boss, and he was the oh, first person ever to beat it. Isn't that cool? That is really cool. But yeah, so it's like that. It's like okay, yeah, I can like, see that. On like when when a new um when a new expansion dropped or a new boss dropped in an expansion, like our guild would like you know like everybody else we sit no, there. No, everybody like, wants the world first. Yeah, yeah, we got a few. We didn't get any world first, but we did get we did get several server firsts. That's cool. Um, our guild, which was really fun, and so I think a lot of that stuff like has like clung to me because I don't think I cared prior to playing WoW. Um, and and it's and again, I don't choose my stuff to try to do that. I just pick books that I want. Yeah. But when I'm reading something that I'm like, huh, why don't you want to talk about this? You know, like whatever. Well, it's cool uh, to bring light to something, especially when it's a little lesser known for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I, I have to, I'm, I gotta work. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> rush through this. I have to actually do the work to be able to record a decent audio. Um. So yeah. And then other than that, like I do, I do want to start something of Janie Wirtz's. Like I considered reading To Ride Hell's Chasm, mm -hmm. but it's almost as long as this one. So I don't know why I just don't start <laughs> to read this. You know? Yeah, I mean? and it has a basis of something you would really enjoy because you talked kind of about like one of the reasons why you wanted to read it is that it has that historical influence. Yeah. So it's yeah, and then I, I went and looked. So it's not it's not based on a historical thing, but she wrote it when she was watching a historical documentary um, about. Uh like the the aftermath of war like the 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 consequences of war as opposed to um and you know and you know that like the bloody like you know the bloody toll of war as opposed to just the fighting itself and the stuff the, the stuff before and after and and that kind of stuff and she's like why why are a bunch of fantasy books not like that and the, and you know to be fair we don't often see the consequences afterwards of 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 the war you know you win the war that's the end right yeah. So that it still makes it's still very interesting. The fact that she was watching a history documentary at all makes me happy. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I do. But I mean, I'm gonna have to read this slowly. Also, um, I need to read Crowfall, which is book three of the Blackwing books, because uh, that'll end me a trilogy, which is nice. Um, but the problem is, I also, oh, oh, what have I done, Jimmy? I also have the arc. I've got the arc of that, the Will of the Many. Which... Watch you become overwhelmed in real time. The Ark of the Will of the Many, which I don't know why I got it. I don't want to read it, but I have that. I've got the Ark of the Judas Blossom, but that also comes out in July, so I have time for that one. I have the Ark of the Next Three Kingdoms book, which comes out in March, so I do have to read that. And then I think I'm about to get an Ark of Magnificent Seven, which is the new De Castell, Sebastian De Castell book, which right. I'll definitely read. So I'm probably reading Arcs from now until I die. <laughs> yeah, you're all in, you're on you're like the new release channel now. I don't want, no, I'm not. I don't, I never want it to be that. I don't want to be that. It just happens that a bunch of people that I like are releasing books right now. You have a problem saying no, don't you? <sighs> yes, which is why when I was talking about it, I want to be invited so I can refuse it. I usually don't. And then I find myself overwhelmed <laughs> because I agreed to do all the things that people want me to do. Yes, I have a problem saying no. I always have. Um, hmm. I, I don't have a problem saying no, no to my, like, really close friends the people who care about you and love you yeah yeah like like if my buddy matt said hey can we play this instead of this I'd be like no we're playing this sit down um and you know my students can i retake this no shut up shut uh, up <laughs> i say that all the time I say, shut <laughs> up um so yeah um and my mom asking me anything i don't have a problem with mom no i'm not gonna do that like i don't have any problem with that but yeah, I mean, I do. Hmm. I do. I wish I wish it wasn't like that, but eh, it happens. I think everyone's guilty of it to a certain extent. If you're at all a people pleaser. Yeah. 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 Are you a people pleaser, Jimmy? At times. At times. Same. Um, I just always want to do right by people. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's the hard thing. I don't necessarily care if people like me, but I want to do right by them. If, if I owe them anything or Except, you know, unless it's Philip. Of course, yeah. uh, it of goes course. without saying. We don't have to qualify. Yeah, right? we don't have. We don't have to. That's the the asterisk, right? <laughs> Alan, we've been talking for over th almost three and a half hours. I'm Are we gonna, leaving? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. I know that uh, you're probably exhausted, Jimmy. I know, but it's always so much fun talking to you. I know, and we'll probably talk more offline. So. <laughs> Jimmy, we need to start a podcast. We're, you're on it. 
<laughs> no, I know. No, when you start like a like a like a like a like a different like podcast. a non book podcast. Well, it can be about books, but like a short podcast, like like shorter Gosh. episodes, shorter more release. episodes. We could do that. I think we might be able to do that. I think we could find a topic that we could talk about for like thirty minutes, and then you know, like today we're going to talk about freaking honesty and self published reviewing books. Today we're going to talk about we're going to talk about Philip. <laughs> <laughs> this is a seven part series about the <laughs> Philly Chase. It's Ken. It's Ken Burns's documentary on <laughs> Philip Chase. I honestly would love to see Philly Chase as an alter ego, where like he has one gold tooth, you know, Philly and like Chase. the bandana. Philly C. Philly C. Philly C. Coming in live, and it's That's just right. like Philip covering a little Dirk song. I would. Oh my god. I Philip don't. always knew, even when he was a baby, he would never own a television. I would, would be very, I would love that so much. Very, very Ken Burns. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> I just want Philip to have one contact that makes his entire eye white. Like I, I don't know why. It's just why? I don't know, man. It's just something I think about a lot. Why do people watch us, Jimmy? I don't know. I don't get it. We had a uh, we had over 150 people the entire time. We've set the concurrent viewer record a couple different times tonight. So again, again, yeah. It is, I don't know, man. People love it. People love what? it. I love it, dude. I I love these episodes. Oh, I love the show. I love doing this channel. Like there are times where sometimes I can get caught up and a little bit exhausted, but like it always feels right every time I go live for a chat. Ben, nuts. thank you, Ben. Oh, Ben Brown. Not Turn all heroes wear ringer. capes. So I, I would have forgotten. Some... Literally, I would. I was going to remind you, but Ben oh, stole my thunder. I, I wasn't going to remind you, to be honest. I literally would. <laughs> well, I literally would have would have left it on, and I, you know, ugh. Hey, and that's why the chat's the best. Our third guest, and we love you guys for being here. We appreciate you so much. And Amanda coming in with the final ten spot. Thank you yes, so much, Amanda. Kawun. Amanda, you have done more than you know to support this channel. And Amanda is one of my favorite people in the world. So, Amanda, thank you. It's very generous of you. And uh, I appreciate you dealing with all the um, anti-vegan propaganda that we were spreading with all poor Gustav earlier. Uh, make sure to oh, Google is, Gustav. Is Amanda vegan? Yes. Amanda, oh. is, Amanda is awesome. Uh, I but, agree. Amanda and I Amanda and I are, are allies. Hey, make me a promise. You'll bring Amanda on Jeopardy. Does Amanda want to join Jeopardy? Does she Amanda said she created a booktube channel just to get on Jeopardy. <laughs> Are you serious? She I, she said it earlier. I highlighted it. I missed it. I was How dare probably you. foaming at the mouth. Well, you need to bring her on. Okay. Definitely. She'll, she'll kill it for sure. For sure. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Alan, any parting words? This is your last ever appearance. <laughs> You're banned after this. What? Shadow yeah, I, ha I got to bring Philip on more. He said that if I did the read along, I got to bring him on. <laughs> You'll have Hillary on next time, I'm sure. I actually am. I think she is the next guest. <laughs> yeah. Bookborn puts out one video a week. But it's a banger every time. I don't think they're all bangers. I think I think many of them are good. I don't think I've told I have told Hillary this to her face. I, I always tell Hillary, I'm like, Hillary. You have it figured out. Like, like, can you just write a book on how to do this? Because you put out one video a week and like have more subs than even Philip. And we know that Philip has the most subs of anybody. <laughs> Meanwhile, me and Jimmy over here, like spinning our wheels in the dirt. I'm sorry. I lumped you in with me and the sub 10 K crowd. Yeah, I, I was going to let that slide. <laughs> you, thank you for being kind. My audience knows. They know. I love Hillary, but I can't believe that you're having her on. She's she's a winner, Alan. <laughs> I hate we you. like winners. I you just I just need to always have the link to the stream so that if I find something objectionable, I can just click on it, appear, and yell at somebody. <laughs> just the live Alan cam. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> yes, you need a we live. We can do that. We can a do that. live Alan cam. Yeah, I got to spruce up a little bit of the live production here. We got we got we to get some stuff going. But you, you have, have to always picture. be available then. There's going to be a picture in picture of live Alan Cam. You can't even hear what I'm saying. You just see my facial expressions. <laughs> this is uh this might be an idea I play around with. Oh my gosh. There's always caps lock Alan. You're right. There's yeah. always caps <laughs> lock. 
Oh Alan, my gosh. Thanks I for love, being I here, love buddy. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. It was my pleasure. And everyone, as Bye you guys. know, yeah, you guys know the drill, like subscribe, do all the good stuff. I, I know everyone that's listening is already done all those things, but I love you. I appreciate you. And until we see you next time, be good, be safe. And remember to always keep turning the page. Damn right.